You know the voice. He catches at the 20, the 10, touchdown! You know the game. High school football. And now here he is, the voice of Delaware High School football, Anthony Joseph! Hello everyone, I am Anthony Joseph, and tonight it's the Caesar Rodney Riders home opener as they will face the defending state champions, the Middletown Cavaliers, in a non-conference matchup in Camden. This game is being brought to you by Del One Federal Credit Union, Delaware Electric Co-op, Fitzgerald Salvage and Recycling, Milford Southern State, Smith's Family Restaurant, Satterfield and Ryan, and First State Chevrolet. The Caesar Rodney Riders are led by their head coach, Mike Schoenwood. Last week, CR lost in overtime to Sally's 41-35 and have lost seven straight to them. Meanwhile, the Middletown Cavaliers have at the helm Mark Del Percio and have won two straight Division I championships. Last week, they defeated the Concord Raiders 35-8 and scored 14 points in the final period. I'd like to now welcome in my broadcast partner, John Martin. John, good to see you. Anthony, it is so good to see you too. Uh, after an amazing opening week, here we are again for a much anticipated contest. Even though it's a non-conference contest, this traditional second game of the season promises to be a barn burner. Anthony, what do you expect to happen tonight? Well, I expect uh, that the Caesar Rodney defense are going to have a difficult time trying to stop Darius Wade and Chris Godwin as uh, Wade was named Delaware's Offensive Player of the Year after passing for 2,275 yards. He threw for 27 touchdowns, and then on the ground he was just as lethal, rushing for 546 yards and scored seven touchdowns. Meanwhile, Chris Godwin was a first-team All-State selection at three positions and dynamic on offense as he caught uh, John 42 passes for 834 yards and scored 12 touchdowns. There's no wonder why uh, those two ball players are going to be playing football on a scholarship. Their, their education is paid for courtesy of being brilliant scholars first and athletes second. John, uh, Darius Wade is committed to uh, Boston College and uh, Godwin to uh, Penn State, and those are two prestigious universities. Big-time universities that are as well-known for their academics as they are for their tenacious sports. Uh, Darius Wade, a young man who I recall uh, even before he went to high school, you know, his mother is a counselor in uh, the Apoquinimi School District, and she told me, Marty, my son is something special. And I get a chance to see him firsthand tonight. He with his companion, Mr. Godwin, to see what kind of offensive connection they'll have. Now, I did also get a chance to talk to uh, the Caesar Rodney coaches, and what they've told me is that they've got an outstanding quarterback, but what they believe is that they're going to present a balanced attack, and they're going to try to surprise the Cavaliers. Now, John, you were working your way uh, through the crowd. It's a festive crowd tonight. It is a festive crowd, and um, I do have the smell of chicken on my fingers, uh, courtesy of uh, Coach Chester Scott and his crew. Uh, even though Lake Forest is playing a game, he's going to try to catch the first half here and then breeze on downstate to see Lake Forest as they play Sussex Central. John, we're going to take our first break as you're listening to Friday Night Football Under the Lights on CatchItLive.com and Hot Country 107.7. Is Del One Federal Credit Union right for you? If you live in Delaware, the answer is yes. All Delaware residents can become a member of Del One. Call us at 302-739-4496 or stop by any of our convenient branch locations throughout Delaware to find out how. Visit del-one.org for more information on the amazing benefits Del One Federal Credit Union has to offer. Become a member today. Conditions and restrictions apply. Equal opportunity lender. Deposits are federally insured by NCUA. Got metal? Get it to Fitzgerald Salvage and Recycling. Fitzgerald's pays you cash. Fitzgerald Salvage and Recycling is environmentally friendly and helping to keep Delmarva clean and green by recycling. 
So bring your copper, aluminum, and brass. Stainless steel, wire, lead, light iron, heavy steel, tractors, farm equipment, lawnmowers, and appliances, barbecue grills, aluminum cans, even cars and trucks. Fitzgerald's is local and family-owned since 1935. Jesus recycles people. Fitzgerald's recycles cars. It'd sure be nice to get out of the house. Get a change of scenery. And try the wonderful atmosphere and home-style food of Smith's Family Restaurant. We'll treat you like you're coming to our house. We're known for great seafood, the best beef and chicken dumplings around. And you've got to try the homemade sweet potato biscuits and homemade rolls. A great place to eat anytime, seven days a week for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Smith's Family Restaurant. It's worth the drive to eat at Smith's. On Route 13 in Greenwood. Call 349-5114. I'm Gary Rhodes from Milford Southern States. Expect nothing less than a superior performance day when using a Mahindra tractor. The Mahindra tractor can lift heavy loads, and with its cast iron chassis, it provides traction, stability, and control. At Milford Southern States, we feature a full line of Mahindra tractors, including the 3616 four-wheel drive that can carry firewood, dirt, manure, and also clear away snow. It also comes with a deluxe suspension and an easy-access fuel tank. Call us at Milford Southern States, 422-8066. Farmer-owned since 1920. When severe weather strikes, a Generac generator from Satterfield and Ryan will keep your home running smoothly and your family safe and secure. Satterfield and Ryan is Delaware's only elite power pro dealer, providing professional sales, superior service, and quality repairs. Satterfield and Ryan in Milford, online at DelawareGenerators.net. Call 302-422-4919. Satterfield and Ryan, get the job done right the first time. Welcome back to Friday Night Football Under the Lights on CatchAlive.com and Hot Country 1077. Hello, hello everyone. I'm Anthony Joseph, and once again, uh, John Martin as my broadcast partner. And uh, John, CR has a lot of experience this season with 28 seniors uh, on the roster. The defense returns six starters, and the offense returns eight starters from last year's team that were Henlopen Conference champions, eight and four overall, and lost to Middletown 35 to 28 in the semifinals. How will that experience help deal with last week's heartbreaking loss to Sally's? Well, that's what they're going to use to power themselves. They still have the bitter taste of last week and the painful memories of a tough contest where they lost in their tournament last year. But what they're looking to bank on is that seniority that they have. And, of course, the senior leadership of my dad's neighbor, Coach Sean Wolf. Now, well, last week, uh, John, in the game between uh, Sally CR missed a couple of crucial uh, field goals. How important will the field goal game or the kicking game be in this contest? It may factor in. I mean, uh, you talk to the fans and you talk to some people that are really uh, knowledgeable about sports. Some people say it could be very close. Some people say it could be a blowout. But if it is close, it will come down to that kicking game. And by the way, speaking of the kicking game, the kicker for Middletown happens to be another one of the Gurlitz. Three Gurlitzes have put their foot on the ball, and now the youngest one, Claire Gurlitz, a senior, is doing the kicking duties for Middletown Cavaliers. And, John, as uh, you can see, the marching band on the field uh and you like uh, the music. I do love the music. Uh, let me tell you, um, they've got a couple of favorites. One of the things about Middletown with a story program like this, o- over 50 years of outstanding football and uh, an incredible band and an incredible following. So they've got some favorites over there like Max 7 uh, that you'll, they'll play to get the crowd riled up. And uh, the peak of performers uh, for the Caesar Rodney Riders, you have to look at the senior quarterback, Alex Kemp, in his first uh, game of the season. He threw two touchdowns, 259 yards, 7 of 14. One of his uh, favorite targets, Kendall Wicks, three receptions, 122 yards, and a touchdown. It seems, John, if Kemp's going to be successful tonight, he's going to hook up with his main man, Kendall Wicks, score... At least a couple touchdowns. 
Yeah, you're absolutely right, Anthony. And uh, while Middletown has uh, had a great deal of success, their line is just not as big as it has been in the past. Uh, but, they, with, but they've lost in some size. They have made up for with some speed and quickness. But you've got to factor that in because it will also be a contributing factor on the other side as Darius Wade is certainly less likely to have the amount of time he used to have to sit back and take a picture before throwing a pass in his games all last year. And we're talking about uh, last week. Last week, uh, John, was our first game of the season, and the game was Cape and Milford, and Cape prevailed 41-12, to and the Delaware Electric Player of the Week was Justin Lopez. Uh, well, couldn't argue with that, uh, although they had a two-headed monster in the backfield for them. And, Anthony, the way that game started out with Milford with that outstanding uh, pass with the lateral and then the pass to get the first score, what a shock it was that they were that Cape responded with 41 unanswered points. Now, John, we're now going to go to that interview that I conducted with Justin earlier in the week. I'm here with uh, Justin Lopez, Delaware Electric player of the game. Uh, Justin, you scored uh, three touchdowns against uh, the Milford Bucks. How would you describe your performance? It was pre- I was doing pretty good. Um, I just uh, need to get focused a little bit more and uh, get my ball, get my feet on me more because I, I, I felt like I was slipping a lot. So um, it was it was pretty good throughout the whole game. How would you? Um, how would you describe the performance of the offensive line? Because it seemed like you had a lot of big holes. Yeah, I had a lot of holes. Some of the holes I was surprised that they were making for me because um, at practice, our defense, our demo D does pretty good against them. So I was surprised for the holes. Our line is regressing. We have a young line and we have a lot of juniors on the team. The only senior on our line is uh, Thomas Ott and he just and Andrew Grohl, who's our tight end, who's going to UD for on a full ride. But he is, they're just smashing and they're attacking more instead of catching like last year. Our seniors were catching, and this line is uh, just attacking, attacking, attacking. Now you scored a touchdown in the first quarter, second quarter, and then in the second half. What was going through your mind when you scored that third touchdown? I was just um, just to keep playing and keep going hard and blocking for my team because I know our main our offensive goal as running backs is to block for our fullbacks and the fullbacks are to block for us. So it was pretty good throughout the whole time, but just um, just to keep pushing and pushing because it was our first game. So a lot of us, not most of us, some of us were kind of winded, but I was in good shape. But um, we just got to keep pushing and pushing. What did uh, Coach Akalika tell you uh, after the game between uh, the Milford Bucks and the K Vikings? He told us that we need to keep pushing to strive to go and go up there and be uh, our pitcher Spalding because they're a good team and they have a lot of good players, like our number 11. He's a really good player, and um, he's told us so we gotta, we're not there yet, so we need to keep pushing and pushing that practice and keep working hard because, obviously, we, sh- we should have beat Milford by more than we did, but we're, not, we're just not at that stride. We need to keep striving and striving to get back to where we need to be. Final question, what, ha- what has Coach Collick meant to the Cape Viking program and especially to you? Well, it's the Cape Viking program, this is not his program. This is, like he says, this is not his program. This program is bigger than all of us. And he always installs that in us every day. He installs us to work hard and then play hard and to just go hard because you never know when your last, when your last down or your last play can be. He just, um, he's a great aspect. He's a great coach. He's a great, he, I, love the, I love him as a coach and as a person because he's more of a, and he's not more, he's, a, not a, he's not a coach. He's a coach, but he's also a big mentor and a big part of the program. He is, he just, he's just a great man. Um, there's nothing to say. He's just a good man and a, he is a, he's a great coach and he's willing to push his players to the way we have to be. And he's, he always, he always, he, the favorite thing to say is after practice we ask him a question. He's like, do we win today, coach? And he just said, he'll tell us like straight up if we won or if we lost. And most of the days we win, but when um, we don't push it, he tells us straight up. And he gets after us because as a coach, and that's, he loves us, so he gets after us. Justin, uh, thanks uh, for taking the time. Really appreciate it. And that was Delaware Electric Player of the Week, Justin Lopez, in a game of last week between the Cape Vikings and the Milford Bucks. I also conducted an interview with Cape's head coach, Bill Collick, and now we're going to go to that interview. Here with Cape and Lopen Viking head coach, Bill Collick. And uh, Coach uh, Collick, uh, talk about uh, the effort that Justin Lopez uh, gave on Friday night against the Milford Bucks as he scored three touchdowns. Well, he's an older guy, and certainly we expect those kind of things from him. He has the ability to take 
control of the game, and, and I think if we are going to get what we want to get, Justin has to play a big, big, even a bigger role in, in, in what we're doing. What did you uh, think of the offensive line that paved the way for a lot of uh, big runs that Justin uh, Lopez uh, was able to uh, gain? I think one of the big things for us is, first and foremost, we have to, uh, or we believe in that, we need to control the football by controlling the line of scrimmage, and I thought we were able to do that on both sides of the ball. Uh, we've got some kids uh, uh, that are platooning there, and so I've always been a firm believer in the more you have that can play, the better off you are. So I was very, very pleased with our offensive and defensive lines. What did you tell uh, Justin uh, after the game? I, I just said to him that to certainly I'm real proud of what he'd done and that we need to keep working and we need to keep getting better. Uh, you know, the, the stakes get higher for us, and it's going to go up and up and up, and uh, the competition level gets up. So we've got to make sure that we're getting better each week. You talk about that uh, that this uh, Friday night you're taking on Archbishop Spalding, a team out of Maryland. What's going to be the key to victory? Again, I think you have to be able to run the football and stop them from running the football. Last year we got up on them, and then like a true champion, they came back. And the quarterback is the real key, and I think we have to make sure that we're able to contain him. How difficult is it going to be on the road this time, taking on such a talented team? Well, you like to play at home without a doubt, but it's, you know the schedule's made. you got to get on there. And if you're going to get where you want to get, you're going to have to play on the road. So we've got to learn to play on the road. We, we've got to travel. And a lot of uh, times I tell our kids all the time that you have to learn how to travel. You have to get prepared when you travel. You've got a two-hour, three-hour bus ride, but you're going to be able to get off the bus and play. Coach Kalik, uh, is there anything you'd like to add before I let you go? No, I'm real proud of our kids. Right now we're 1-0, and we've got a long way to go, but I'm certainly proud of where we are right now. Thanks, Coach Kalik. Appreciate it. Thank you. And we're back alive uh, in Camden as the big game tonight. Caesar Rodney taking on Middletown, but that was uh, Cape's uh, head coach, uh, Bill Collick, and also like to thank uh, Justin uh, Lopez. We're going to take another time out as you're listening to Friday Night Football under the lights on catchitlive.com and Hot Country 107.7. Is Del One Federal Credit Union right for you? If you live in Delaware, the answer is yes. All Delaware residents can become a member of Del One. Call us at 302-739-4496 or stop by any of our convenient branch locations throughout Delaware to find out how. Visit del-one.org for more information on the amazing benefits Del One Federal Credit Union has to offer. Become a member today. Conditions and restrictions apply. Equal opportunity lender. Deposits are federally insured by NCUA. When severe weather strikes, a Generac generator from Satterfield and Ryan will keep your home running smoothly and your family safe and secure. Satterfield and Ryan is Delaware's only elite power pro dealer, providing professional sales, superior service, and quality repairs. Satterfield and Ryan in Milford, online at DelawareGenerators.net. Call 302-422-4919. Satterfield and Ryan, get the job done right the first time. I'm Gary Rhodes from Milford Southern States. Expect nothing less than a superior performance day when using a Mahindra tractor. The Mahindra tractor can lift heavy loads and with its cast iron chassis it provides traction, stability and control. At Milford Southern States we feature a full line of Mahindra tractors including the 3616 four-wheel drive that can carry firewood, dirt, manure and also clear away snow. It also comes with a deluxe suspension and an easy access fuel tank. Call us at Milford Southern States 422-8066. Farmer owned since 1923 it'd sure be nice to get out of the house get a change of scenery and try the wonderful atmosphere and homestyle food of smith's family restaurant we'll treat you like you're coming to our house we're known for great seafood the best beef and chicken dumplings around and you've got to try the homemade sweet potato biscuits and homemade rolls a great place to eat anytime seven days a week for breakfast lunch and dinner smith's family restaurant it's worth the drive to eat at smith's on route 13 in greenwood call 349-5114 do you have metal get it to fitzgerald salvage and recycling Fitzgerald's pays you cash. Fitzgerald's will pick up your unwanted vehicles and will buy your car or lawnmower batteries. If it's made of metal, Fitzgerald's pays cash and recycles it, which helps the environment. Fitzgerald's will also pick up and deliver roll-off dumpsters, and they accept electronics too, including cell phones and computers. Fitzgerald's is local and family-owned since 1935. Jesus recycles people. Fitzgerald's recycles cars.
You're listening to Friday Night Football Under the Lights on CatchItLive.com and Hot Country 107.7 FM. I'm Anthony Joseph, my broadcast partner, John Martin. And, John, we have a new sponsor of this week. It's First State Chevy in Georgetown. Tell us about it. That's right, First State Chevrolet on Route 113 in Georgetown, your one-stop shop for all of your automotive needs with new Chevrolet sales, service, and a collision center in one convenient location. Come see their professional, courteous staff and see why they put you, the customer, first. You can call them at 302 856 2521 or visit them on the web at firststatechevy.com. That's First State Chevy in Georgetown. And John, get ready uh, for the kickoff between the Middletown Cavaliers, Caesar Rodney Riders. I'm excited. This is a could be a preview of the state championship game it, in December. It absolutely. We're getting ahead of ourselves, or I always do, though. <laughs> It absolutely could be. This is a fantastic game, and the season is always great for The weather is always fantastic. I've seen this game all the way up in old Bill Billings Stadium and down here. No matter what, it's guaranteed to be a fantastic game. And now we're getting ready for the national anthem. Packed house as they're getting ready for the national now, anthem. Please remove your hats as we honor America. Let's play football. Let's play football, Anthony. Week two of Friday Night Lights. Here with my friend, Anthony Joseph. And, uh, John, that was uh, Emily Walls from uh, Caesar Rodney. She did an outstanding job. Beautiful job. Uh, pitch perfect. And a big shout-out, too, to the Caesar Rodney uh, ROTC. Looks like the Air Force ROTC from here. I can't quite tell. But they are crisp and sharp and have done a wonderful job. This like they've secured the field. They're putting away the colors, and now each school will respectively cheer for their colors. Caesar Rodney with the blue and gold and the blue and white of the Cavaliers. And uh, Caesar Rodney, they're ready. They're onto the field as a Middletown still on the sidelines. Perhaps and you know Coach has shown if he has his players well prepared as they want to rebound from last week's loss to Sally's on the road as this is the home opener between the Middletown Cavaliers in a non-conference matchup in Camden. Well, you got to take your head off to uh, the Riders. They're going to start off on offense here. It looks like, looks like the quarterback, Darius. Uh, <laughs> That's Darius Wade getting ready to <laughs> kick it off for the Middletown Cavaliers. Almost Deep had a little bit. A little bit of a brain lock there. A friend of that, mine named Darius Powell worked at Middletown. But that's yes. fine. Oh, is he setting the ball up and he's going to kick it off? And the deep man for Caesar Rodney, number 16, standing at his own five-yard line, waiting for Wade. And that's uh, Kendall Wicks uh, back deep for the Riders. As Wade putting the ball on the tee. 
And Wicks, he's ready. Wade's now ready. We're getting ready for the Caesar Rodney Riders to take on the Middletown Cavaliers. Friday night football under the lights. On catchitlive.com in hot country. Wade kicks it downfield. It's a high kick returned by Wicks. 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 30, 40, 30, 35, 50, 35, 30. And he's in middle of the Game saving tackle by number 17 for the uh, Cavaliers. And I'll tell you, John, to start the game with great field position, that's what it's going to take. Well, As yes. the Middletown Cavaliers, the defending state champions. Well, thankfully, the uh, able play of the sophomore, uh, Justin Thompson, who was able to, looks like it saved uh, an early six points by the Riders on an exciting play. First down and 10. Wing T formation. Kemp, the senior. Ball's handed off. Straight ahead. Still on his feet. 25-20 in the ball care, making his way to about that 19-yard line. And Caesar Rodney looks like they're starting off really strong early with that very difficult to read wing T offense, a staple of Delaware football. To first down and 10, all the way advanced, all the way to the 24 yard line of Middletown. Wing T formation, Kemp rolls to his left. He's looking downfield, got a man open. That's Burgess, touchdown, Caesar Rodney. Oh, and I'll tell you what, Anthony, they have. Shocked the Cavaliers and their fans appear to be a little bit stunned as they've come right out. March right down the field at will and already six points on the board. At the 11.28 mark in the first quarter, Alex Kemp hooks up with Seth Brocious, his tight end. And they strike early, and we'll have to see if it's early and often, but Middletown has a potent offense too, John. Yes, now we're getting do. ready for the extra point attempt by Tim Steidel, the kicker. Ball's down and we have a flag, our first flag of the game. It's early though, 11-23. Middletown taking on the Caesar Rodney Riders live in Camden. Yes, they do. And it looks like Kemp is the uh, placeholder. We'll wait and see what the officials indicate. And it looks like he wants to let everybody know he had a yellow flag. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony, what does it mean when they take the flag and they just wave it over their head like they just don't care? Back to the action. Tim Steidel as it's no good, no good. As Caesar Rodney last week in that loss, they missed two crucial field goals. And we'll have to see if it comes back and hurts them at the end of the contest. Now, Still, it's 6 nothing. Caesar Rodney on top of the Middletown Cavaliers, 11-23, first quarter. Yeah, I know we were having a little bit of fun, but just to educate our uh, listening fans outside, if the official picks the flag up and waves it over his head back and forth, what he's saying is it was an inadvertent flag drop and uh, that the play will be played over. And once again, Caesar Rodney, they're back on the field. Coach Schoenwolf, one of the best coaches in Division I, or that matter, even Division II, and they want to get their first win of the season and not jump to one and one on the year. There's no shame in their game. They're not afraid. They've got blood in their mouth, and they're ready to try to take one from the Cavaliers. But as you mentioned earlier, there are a couple of deep, dangerous return men back there for the Cavaliers. Chris Godman deep, standing at his own five. Tim Steidel, the kicker for Caesar Rodney. It's on the tee. He kicks it. It's a short kick. It's a squib. It's fielded at the 25, 30, 35, 40. Still on his feet, 45, making his way near midfield about that 48 to 49-yard line. And Middletown's going to have excellent field position for Darius Wade. But, Anthony, what does that say about Godwin that they're willing to squib kick one and allow them to get the ball up to almost the 50-yard line, but they would rather not put it in the hands of Godwin? What does that say about that young man there? He's one of the best offensive threats in Division I. That's what it shows there. He's as good an offensive threat as you are in the broadcast booth. Well, thank you. That's a nice compliment, John. Now we're back to the action. First down and 10 at the 48-yard line. Darius Wade directing traffic. He's under center. 
Two wide receivers on this near side, one on the far. Man in motion is number 16. Wade back to pass. The south paw, it's complete at the 45. 40 still on his peak feet, past that first down marker at the 35 and makes his way, I believe, to the 34-yard line near the Middletown Cavalier sideline. Ooh, and he is as cool as a 70s movie star. I mean, he was relaxed back there in the pocket. And even though the line isn't as big as they have been in the past, still seems like he had plenty of time to execute the pass. Darius Wade, a four-year starter, and you can tell with that experience. Confidence and swagger. And here they are again with the first down, Anthony. First down and 10 at the 36-yard line of Caesar Rodney. Wade, shotgun formation, direct in traffic. Long snap, high snap. Quarterback keeper on his feet, 30, 25, 20, still spinning at about that 15-yard line. And he just broke, I don't know, five or six tackles. They could not wrap him up. And it's very important. We talked about that last week. It's not about uh, where they hit you the first time, but how many yards you can churn out after that initial contact. And he's got gears, Anthony. I mean, he just sped up and sped up and accelerated and eventually was hauled down, but not until they had a first down. It's a first down and 10 at the 15-yard line of Caesar Rodney. Darius Wade, empty backfield, shotgun formation, four wide receiver set, still directing traffic, 10-17, first quarter. Wade to Southpaw. He's looking to throw downfield. He's got a man open in and out of his hands. Well defended by number 25 for Caesar Rodney. But man, was there some velocity on that pass. And I mean, it was, it's a catchable toss, but great speed. But looked like uh, even though it hit his hands, the ball player just couldn't squeeze the old pumpkin. And that was Malcolm Stone with the coverage, the linebacker for the Riders defense. 10-0-8, first quarter. Caesar Rodney, six. Middletown, zero. But on their first possession, they are threatening. Wade under center this time. Two wide receivers on the near side. One on the far. He's got a running back in the backfield. Now the man in motion. He pitches it to him. I believe that's Godwin on his feet. At the 15, 10. And knocked out of bounds, I believe, about the four-yard line. That tackle was made by number 33, Dean Johnson, the senior, six foot two inches tall and 215 pounds of Caesar Rodney Ryder. Excellent, clean, safe tackle. And pretty impressive, seeing as though he took Godwin on head on. D.J. Johnson on the stop, 10-0-2, first quarter, CR6, Middletown 0. It's a third down and short at about that two-yard line. Wade, shotgun formation. Fakes it to Godwin instead. It's a slant pattern, well covered by number two for Caesar Rodney, LaShawn Miles. Anthony, you mentioned that uh, Cesar Rodney's got experience on both sides of the ball, and it looks like uh, they've come up big um, in this last particular uh, defensive series. And Cesar Rodney has a lot of experience, 28 seniors on the roster. 9.57, first quarter, 6 to nothing. Cesar Rodney leading, but Middletown, it's a fourth and two, and the ball now is at the seven-yard line. This is a tough decision for... Mark Del Percio, but he's going to go for it. This is an odd formation now. It certainly is. Uh, that is the good old-fashioned wing, t no, not cor correction, uh, T formation. Ball's handed off to number 20. He Runs kept his feet backs. moving, Anthony. Pushing the pile. Awesome second effort out there, and it looks like uh, there is a Cesar Rodney player who's down on the and field. He was uh, short of the goal line. Still enough to get a first down. And there is an injury timeout. But, John, tell us about our new sponsor uh, once again, First State Chevy in Georgetown. Let me tell you, First State Chevy on Route 113 in Georgetown is your one-stop shop for all of your automotive needs with new Chevrolet sales, service, and the collision center in one convenient location. Come see their professional, courteous staff and see why they put you, the customer, first. 
Anthony, you can call them on 302-856-2521, or you can visit them at the web at firststatechevy.com. That's First State Chevy in Georgetown. And, John, it's 949 in the first quarter. Caesar Rodney, six. Middletown, nothing. And the injured Caesar Rodney player, number 78, Brendan Moore, he does double duty because on the offensive line, he's the left tackle, and left tackles are very important. And then he's on the defense as a defensive tackle. So it's very strenuous when they have to, when uh, young players have to work on both sides of the ball. It certainly is, but it's good to see that the young man was able to uh, meander off the field under his own power. And now we're back to the end, uh, to the action, Anthony. We certainly are. Middletown, they picked up the first down, did not get the touchdown, but that was a high snap. Wade recovers it back at about the 23-yard line after they get that crucial first down. That's a high snap coming out of the injury timeout to Moore of Caesar Rodney, and they're lucky that Caesar Rodney did not pounce on it and recover that ball. That would have been the first turnover for the Cavaliers. That's right, but it certainly shows a great deal of savvy, too. The, uh, the quarterback, Darius Wade, not looking to make a big play, but certainly looking just to recover the fumble and secure the ball so that they can live. Live again to play another play. And once again, he's just very poised, and it really helps Coach Del Percio having that four-year starter with Darius Wade. Yes, he does. He looks comfortable as a pair of bedroom slippers back there. It's a second down and long. Wade, he throws it downfield. I believe that's Godwin. Pass is complete. It's a slant pattern. And there's another Caesar Rodney player down. Now he's up. Yeah, but there's a little bit of laundry on the field, and I don't think they'll wave this one off because it was tossed up to indicate that it was perhaps a personal foul, but we'll wait to see what the official signal. Looked like uh, some of the players between uh, Middletown and Caesar Rodney were kind of talking to one another. And it's against Caesar Rodney. There was a little bit of extracurricular activity that went on after that, and I don't know whether there was some jaw jacking, but you got to remember, these two teams are playing uh, right now and jockeying for position, a little bit of bragging rights, and a little bit of seeding later on as they get ready, not looking past today's game, but certainly getting ready for the state tournament. Unsportsmanlike conduct against uh, Caesar Rodney, as that was a long second down and about 21 after the high snap. So between Eight. the nice pass and a great run, looks like they've gotten some of that turf back. They're back within striking distance, Anthony. Now it's 8-20, first quarter. Middletown still with the ball. Wade under center. Two wide receivers on the near side. He's got one on the far. And two running backs in the backfield. Ball's handed off on the left side for a minimal gain. about a less than a yard as of the Caesar Rodney defense stuffing uh, the middle. Once again, drawing on all of that experience and uh, with just as much experience as a real hunger because they really want to get a taste of some Cavalier blood and get that win. 7.30 first quarter. It's going to bring up a fourth and five at the five-yard line. And Del Percio, he's going to go again on fourth down. Second time during this first possession. Wade back they throw on his fade, fade, fade route. In and out of his hands as he juggled it. Well covered by number 16 for Caesar Rodney. Kendall Wicks, the free safety, as he's playing both ways. Excellent job by Wicks. And even though uh, they lined up with that power running offense, it uh, looked like a pretty thinly veiled disguise as it almost seemed very obvious that they were going to launch one to the very capable Godwin. However, the Riders have come up very big on their defensive stop. And here they are on their home turf ready with first and 10 heading the other way. 
And Del Percio, he had to feel confident as he made his first uh, fourth down. The second one did not work out for him. So going to turn the ball over on downs. It's a first down and 10 at the five-yard line of the Riders. As Kemp, the senior quarterback, wing T formation, ball's handed off on this near side to number 34 for a couple yards. Trying to spread out the Middletown Cavalier defense. And, and Kemp going to the sideline, trying to get the play from Sean Wolf. And he looks to the sidelines. He's ready now. Breaks huddle. 6.43, first quarter. CR6, Middletown 0. It's going to bring up a second down and long. Handed off to number 23 on the far side, still on his feet, and there's a penalty near the first down marker. That was number 23 on the run for CR. Naquan Watkins. He's done a pretty good job. He runs a little bit east and west, but he looks for a seam, and once he finds one, he turns it right on up and cuts right through the hole. Anthony, the fans seem to continue to trickle in, but one of the beautiful dynamics about a Caesar Rodney Stadium is that you've got just as many people hanging out on the sidelines having uh, a little bit of meet and greet and perhaps concession stay and eat while they're out there and enjoying some great football. Speaking of uh, Watkins, last week against the Sallies, 21 carries, and he rushed for 152 yards. Back to the action on a second down and nine. Kemp heaves it up in the air. Well covered, double coverage, in and out of his hands. Pass incomplete intended for number eight. And Four. he almost got himself in a vice grip. I mean, he reached up there, bounced off his hands, but two Cavalier defenders were right there, ready to uh, give him a little bit of nudge and a shove, and it led to the incomplete pass. And for CR, that was number eight, Deshaun Schuler, as he grabbed three receptions last week, 115 yards, against Sally's in the heartbreaking loss in overtime. 6-10, first quarter, CR six, Middletown zero. Third down and long. Kemp hands it off out of the wing T formation. Ball carrier about a yard or two as Middletown, they were prepared. They were quite prepared. They uh, had someone covering all the options, and you got to know that Coach Del Percio is a little bit familiar with the wing T. He is a DiNardo disciple, so he's seen that offense, but he is also a man, that, you know, with his own mind. He is willing to do a little bit of trickery. He's got the confidence. He's got the ball players. He'll try something new if he gets the win. And a third down, unsuccessful. Brings out fourth down and nine. They're going to have to punt it away. And the Godwin, Chris Godwin's back from Middletown at about the 45. And that's a short kick by Kemp. Sealed it at the 35-yard line. And he makes his way to about the 30. That was a very uh, short kick uh, by uh, Alex Kemp as he's playing uh, the duty uh, as the punter. He's also playing a little bit of keep away, but that one happened to take a, a funny bounce, and it did get to uh, Godwin's hand, who seems to be a load to bring down, but Cesar Rodney is doing the gang tackling, and uh, so far they've been able to corral both Wade and Godwin. Cesar Rodney up six at home. 5-11, first quarter, as Middletown starting this drive in Caesar Rodney territory on a first down and 10 at the 31-yard line. Wade now the shotgun, two wide receivers on this near side, one on the far, has a running back in the backfield. Man in motion is number 16. It's a high snap. The southpaw throws it's complete at the 25 Makes his way still on his feet to about that 20-yard line past the first down marker. And this is my first time getting a chance to see uh, Darius Wade. I had seen so much Middletown football, so much Cesar Rodney football, but spent three years down there at Lake Forest, so I didn't get a chance to see these young men. And now here I am getting a chance to see all of these outstanding athletes 
after a little bit of a hiatus, and it is an exciting opportunity. And thank you, thanks to you, Anthony. Thanks, uh, John. As a Wade, he is committed to a Boston College and a Godwin to uh, Penn State. Second down and short. Ball at the 22-yard line of the Riders. Stoppage of play. Looks like a uh, delay of game against uh, Middletown, and it is. And that's the worst enemy, John, of a head coach, a penalty. Especially a dead ball penalty. I mean, you just, you know, we're in the second week. We're talking about teams that aren't brand new. They've got veteran ball players out there. So that is very frustrating to the coach and to the fans. It's a second down and six. We're in the first quarter. Cesar Rodney in Middletown. CR6, Middletown zero. Middletown with the ball at the 26-yard line after the, the delay of game. Shotgun formation. Man in motion is number 17. The south ball's back to pass. Steady's going to tuck it and run. Still on his feet about that 20-yard line. Close to a first down. I believe there's a flag on the field, and it is. Holding against Middletown, two big penalties. Once again, Anthony, uh, we're playing a little bit of going up and a little bit of going back, and perhaps there's a little bit of, you know, big game jitters. I mean, they are playing in front of a pretty big crowd. It is a beautiful night. Once again, sitting next to my friend here on Friday Night Lights. So, you know, what's a ball player to do with a crowd like this and all of these fans here? It's Friday Night Football under the lights on CatchingLive.com and Hot Country 1077. 346 first quarter. Middletown 0, CR 6. And after the two big penalties, you now have a second down in 24. And the ball is now all the way to the 45-yard line, still in Cesar Rodney territory. Now wait, he's at midfield in the shotgun formation. Two wide receivers on this near side, one on the far as a running back in the backfield. He fakes it to the running back. Instead, he's going to tuck it and run. No, instead he's thrown. It's picked off. He's at the 35, 40. Big interception and a big return, and he ran right into his own defensive, uh, his own uh, defensive lineman there. But big turnover, and once again, here come the Riders on the offensive side of the ball. Anthony, you can read body language. Uh, what does the body language look like over there for the Cavaliers? Well, on that play, uh, Wade he looked, he faked it to number 16. Then he acted like that he wanted to run with it, and then at the last minute. I think um, him being indecisive, he threw the ball, and that's what led to the turnover. It's a first down and 10 at the 43-yard line, and now the ball carry for Cesar Rodney makes his way to about the 49-yard line of the Cavaliers. Huge carry on first down, picked up just about six yards. It's going to bring up second and four for the Riders. Kemp getting the play from his head coach, Mike Schoenworth, in his sixth season. 2.45, the clock continues to run. First quarter, CR 6, Middletown 0. CR, wing T formation. And the ball carrier is met right away with Cavalier defenders pushing the pile, trying to at least get a yard or two. And it really seems like tonight that Caesar Rodney is fired up and they... You always want to win, but it would feel so good to get a victory over the Middletown Cavaliers, the team that knocked you out in the semifinals last year in the playoffs. Well, right now they do look focused. I mean, everybody is, uh, they're slanting. I know that's an acronym, but they're all staring at the ball player. They're leaning toward them. They're paying attention. And third down and one out of that wing tee. And I believe he got enough on that second surge to get a first down. And that was Alex Kemp, quarterback sneak. First down, Caesar Rodney. As the crowd likes it, 144 first quarter. CR6, Middletown 0, they have the ball. Kemp breaks huddle. 
under center. Wing T formation. Man in motion, number 34. It's handed off straight ahead. And he is pushed back to about the 45 yard line. They brought everybody. Yes, they did. And but you gotta like uh, the Caesar Roddy running back. He's scrappy. He's feisty. Uh, even though they couldn't bring him down, he gave him a little bit of hey, friends. I'm still here. I'm still standing. 59 seconds. Clock continues to run. CR taking on the Middletown Cavaliers live in Camden. It's bringing up a second down and long. Now at midfield, wing T formation kept under center. Rolls to his right. He's looking downfield. He throws it. It's incomplete as he was under pressure, almost sacked, and the ball was just too low. But he did not want to be sacked because he would have taken probably about a 10-yard loss. Well, Godwin did come around and uh, come around the end pretty quickly and ran him down and got a little bit of the quarterback's arm. Anthony, I want to ask you if you could tell everyone when we get a next, you know, a next break, a next opportunity, if they are not listening live, how they can check out the game later. We certainly will. Now we're back to the action with only 38 seconds left in the first quarter. Third down and 15. Kemp under pressure gets it to Brocious, one of his favorite targets. Makes his way into Cavalier territory, and there's a flag, and I think that's a late hit against the Cavaliers. Yeah, once again, when they heave one up and it arcs, usually that is one of the personal fouls. And Kent really has a three favorite targets, Kendall Wicks, Deshaun Schuler, and Seth Brochitz. He scored the first touchdown at the 11.28 mark for CR to push them up. Six to nothing, but the extra point was no good by Tim Steidel. And it's a personal foul against Middletown. 27.6 seconds. And that official out there looks like uh, Mr. DOE himself, Mr. Jeff Fleming, the person that you contact if you have any technical difficulties. A keen, sharp man like that, certainly he would be the head referee of a football game. And I believe that's three key penalties against the Cavaliers. Coach Mark Del Percio cannot be pleased. It's a first down and 10 at the 28. Wing T formation, man in motion, number 23. Ball's handed off to number six, still on his feet. And Dominique Dorsey with a couple yards. Nine seconds left in the first quarter. I believe that's going to be the last play of the first quarter. And that'll do it. At the end of the first quarter, Caesar Rodney 6, Middletown nothing. You're listening to CatchItLive.com and Hot Country 1077. We'll be back after this. Is Del One Federal Credit Union right for you? If you live in Delaware, the answer is yes. All Delaware residents can become a member of Del One. Call us at 302-739-4496 or stop by any of our convenient branch locations throughout Delaware to find out how. Visit del-one.org for more information on the amazing benefits Del One Federal Credit Union has to offer. Become a member today. Conditions and restrictions apply. Equal opportunity lender. Deposits are federally insured by NCUA. You are listening to Friday Night Under the Lights with CatchItLive.com's play-by-play announcer, Anthony Joseph, on Hot Country 107.7 FM. And we're back live in Camden. I'm Anthony Joseph, joined by my broadcast partner, John Martin. Yes, indeed. I'm right here. Uh, Anthony, this is a great I night. have not forgot you, John. <laughs> you were my broadcast partner last week. <laughs> Sorry. We're just working out the kinks right there. I mean, You're hard to miss. You're right there. <laughs> well, Anthony, listen, it's a great night for football. It's Friday night lights. Uh, do you have any sports updates for us here? Yes, I certainly do for you. Indian River and Smyrna at the end of the first quarter. 0-0. Zero, zero. Now we're back to this game between CR and Middletown. Just going to start the second quarter. It's a second down and four at the 22. Ball's handed off straight ahead. And that's Dominique Dorsey. It's lucky if he got back to the line of scrimmage. (laughs) 
And uh, John, while we have a moment, tell us about our new sponsor, First State Chevy in Georgetown. First State Chevrolet on Route 113 in Georgetown, your one stop for all of your automotive needs with new Chevrolet sales, service, and a collision center in one convenient location. Come to our professional, courteous staff and see why they put you, the customer, first. You can call them at 302-856-2521 or visit them on the web at firststatechevy.com. And back to the action is Kent Roll to his right. The pass is incomplete, intended for uh, Brocious, and now it's going to bring up a crucial fourth down, and we'll have to see if Coach uh, Schoenwolf uh, goes for a fourth down in six on the 24-yard line, just underway in the second quarter, 11-19, they are up six to nothing against the defending state champions, the Middletown Cavaliers. Sean, what's going to go for it? Kemp hands it off Hickory. to Wicks on the reverse. He's at the 15-yard line. I think he got enough on that last effort to get the first down. We'll have to see the official spot. It's brave. so close. Brave, brave move by Cesar Rodney. Uh, at the behest of their coach, Coach Schoenwolf. And they were able to get a first down. And I have to tell you, I've seen a lot of Middletown football. That's something that the Cavaliers will do. So I can guarantee you something like that really stings Del Percio. As a coach of Schoenwolf, they watch a lot of uh, film. 11 9 second quarter, first down and 10 at the 15. Kemp back to pass, throws it in the end zone, incomplete, intended wide receiver, I believe was number uh, 16, uh, Kendall Wicks, as uh, Kemp uh, felt the pressure and had to release it because he did not want to take a sack. He didn't want to take a sack, but boy, howdy, does he throw a beautiful ball. I mean, these guys right here, they are well-trained, and you can tell they put just as much time on their footwork as they have on throwing and releasing the ball. Looks like the field goal kicker is warming up for Cesar Rodney. Second down and 10 after the incomplete pass from Kemp. Wing T formation, bought the 17-yard line. Ball's handed off, straight ahead running. And that's a host of Middletown uh, Cavaliers. And talking about uh, Kemp, he started as a sophomore, the starting quarterback. He took over for Aaron Briggs as uh, Schoen, with, uh, even though he was uh, just a sophomore, felt that he had a lot of uh, poise and uh, really uh, showed some leadership uh, qualities uh, as a sophomore, and that's why even they had even through some hard times, you can see now it's really paid off during his senior season. Back to the action, a third down and 10 at the 17. Kemp back to pass, rolls to his right. He's looking downfield under pressure, and he is sacked by number 78 for the Middletown defense. Markel Weldon, the defensive end, he's just a sophomore, John, 6'1", 260. Well, it is a well-known fact that uh, Middletown up there with that talent-rich pool and so many students to choose from, they have always got someone in the pipeline just waiting to fill position. So uh, Coach Del Percio and Coach Sean Wolf, just like you mentioned with uh, the quarterback, Kemp, when they see talent, they'll put the talent on the field. So fourth down and 15. They're going to go for it again. Kemp back to pass. It's a fade route. And pass is incomplete. Intended for Kendall Wicks. As a Kemp once again under pressure. It's a blitz up from Middletown. Well, it looks like Middletown escaped. They got out of there cleanly uh, without a score against them. But now going the other way, Anthony, you got to wonder, what will the Cavaliers do? Uh, are they going to look to make a quick strike, or do you think they'll try a little bit of uh, pounding? I think uh, the first thing, they have to make sure that they do not commit a penalty. They have three uh, penalties uh, so far in this contest. 9.35, second quarter, Middletown 0, CR 6. It's going to bring up a first down and 10 at the 21-yard line for Darius Wade, the senior. Under center. And we'll see, it looks like uh, CR, the defense, they're going to, looks like bring a safety blitz. Wade hands it off straight ahead. And they did bring a blitz. Minimal gain 
for Middletown. It's going to bring up a second down and eight. Ball at the 24-yard line of Middletown, 9-14, just underway in the second quarter. And coming up at halftime, we have a big announcement. We're going to announce who next week's guest is. Oh, Anthony, you've got me on pins and needles. You've always got the best guests. Do you like candy? I love candy. We'll get to that in a a little bit later. Second down and eight at the 24, Wade. He's under pressure. And he takes a sack. Is Wade, he was looking uh, downfield as he had a wide receiver near midfield, but you had uh, the free safety, uh, Wicks, uh, coming over with uh, the defensive back. So instead of uh, Wade, that senior leadership, being a four-year starter, he knew if he threw that ball, most likely it would have been picked off. Yes, you know, athletes sometimes, even though they're confident, uh, every once in a while uh, the confidence can translate into being too comfortable. Looks like um, if they can keep it close, I guarantee you they're going to have an incredible pep talk at halftime by, by their coaching staff. The third down and nine, and the fans chanting defense. And I believe a Middletown, they're going to take a timeout at the 8.02 mark in the second quarter on this key third down and nine at the 21-yard line. Now, Anthony, you tantalizing us here. You, you, you asked me if I like candy. Candy is sweet. Candy is dandy. I can't imagine <laughs> who doesn't love candy. I'm not going to reveal until halftime. Sweet. John, what do you think uh, so far from the Caesar Rodney uh, Riders and Coach uh, Mike Schoenwolf? Um, I'm, I'm very impressed with them. Again, I'm looking at the sideline. They look disciplined. It looks like they probably told them, don't get too riled up. Uh, coaches, uh, and I saw them at the pregame, they, that was a steely focus on them. They seemed a little bit loose, yet focused. And that's the kind of uh, temperament that you need when you're getting ready to play a very big game. And the last week uh, for CR, you're on the road. You take on Sally's. It's your home opener this week in week number two. And who do you take on? The defending state champions, the Middletown Cavaliers. In week number three, you're back home taking on the Hots and Eagles. And your last non-conference is way down, I believe in week number eight, against the St. Mark Spartans. What a daunting task in the non-conference schedule. That's right. Iron sharpens iron, so they're going up against the hard teams. It's a third down and nine at the 21 balls. Looks like he's going to pitch it away. Instead, it, he wants to run. It's at the 25. 30-yard line and knocked out of bounds. I believe that was uh, Wicks making the tackle. Oh, yeah. The outstanding ball players are showing up. Uh, those that are going both ways are making their presence uh, felt and uh, being seen on both sides of the ball. 7.54, second quarter, Middletown 0, Caesar Rodney 6. It's a fourth down and one. For Middletown. And Wade in the shotgun. He's back to pass. He's looking downfield. He has Godwin incomplete in double coverage. What do you think about that play, John? Well, it looks like at this juncture it's not going to be enough at this particular point just to rely on your superstars. I mean, Cesar Rodney is doing a great job of putting the pressure on the quarterback and bottling up Godwin. They're not leaving them out there on one and one. They're putting a couple of riders around them in every play. And we have an update. The Archbishop Spalding Cape Viking game. We'll get to that in a minute. 747. CR taking on Middletown. First down and 10 at the 30 yard line as the fourth and one was unsuccessful for Middletown. Coming out of this wing T formation. The ball carrier gets about a yard. And, uh, John, we have an update. At halftime, Archbishop Spalding at home defeating the Cape Vikings 
37 to 7. I'm surprised by that score. I am too. And and well, you know, of course you've got a pretty good team, but that's a pretty large margin. Back to the action on a second down and nine at the 30. Ball's handed off. And DJ Johnson gets about a yard or two. I believe that was number nine making the stop for Middletown. Miles Hall, the linebacker, he's a senior, 6'3, 180. It's going to bring up a third down, 651, second quarter. Ball's at about the 29 yard line. CR up six to nothing against Middletown. Wing T formation. Kemp rolls to his left, back to pass. He's got Wicks. Not a chance and to collect that. It one, was Anthony. incomplete as Kemp once again almost takes a sack. Instead, gets a hard hit for his effort. Said that pass, he had to release it in a hurry. It was in double coverage, and Wicks did not have a chance to haul in that pass. It was a risky pass. It looks like he just went ahead and got rid of it safely so he wouldn't take a sack. Now we're back to fourth down, to fourth down and eight at the 29. Kemp, they're going to go for it. Wing T formation, man in motion is number 34. Kemp back to pass. He's under pressure. It's complete. Oh to number 33, but his knee's down, and that's where they're going to stop the play as he's well short of the first down marker. Oh, that's one of those kinds of things that I certainly do understand the rules. They're designed to keep the ball players safe, but that particular ruling and the one where the ball goes dead in the end zone after a long kick, I think take just a little bit of the excitement out because you can get some tremendous plays uh, when you get the unexpected. And that was uh, Jordan Downs with the completion, but instead Middletown's gonna take over. First down and 10 at the 31 yard line, 624. Second quarter, CR six, Middletown zero. Back to the action. That's pitched on the far side to number 12, Godwin. And he makes his way near a first down. Hey, he's a big he's a big runner, and I was just trying to do a little bit of research. One thing about the small wonder is that if somebody's got a last name and their first name sounds with the starts with the same letter as someone else, it makes me wonder if there are some relation. And my good friend John Downs, who's been an educator in Caesar Rodney for over 20 years, just might be related to Justin. Six oh three. Second quarter, CR6, Middletown 0. It's a second down and long, bought the 42-yard line. And the ball's handed off, and he stopped right away for about a four- or five-yard loss. As now Darius Wade's going to face a third down in about a mile, it seems. And it does look like Caesar Rodney came to play. They're here showing off for their home fans. And Middletown's going to burn another timeout before halftime. 541, Middletown 0, CR6. And, John, while we have a moment, tell us about our new sponsor tonight, First State Chevy in Georgetown. Aren't we fortunate? Our sponsor, First State Chevrolet, on Route 113 in Georgetown, your one-stop shop for all of your automotive needs with new Chevrolet sales service and a collision center in one convenient location. Come see their professional courteous staff and see why they put you the customer first. You can reach them at 302-856-2521 or visit them on the web at firststatechevy.com. That's First State Chevy in Georgetown. And don't forget, coming up at halftime, it's the big reveal, as I, I'm going to let you know, John, and our big audience, who's going to be my halftime guest next week. It'll be Sussex Tech and Milford. 
Well, I'm certainly waiting for you to wet my whistle as you talk about that candy. It's a third down and 15 at the 38. Coming out of the Middletown Cavalier timeout. Pass is complete at about the 46-yard line. Short of the first down. But a nice uh, throw by Wade. Well, it's, it's not risky if they complete it. But, boy, did it look like... Um, he put that out there in a precarious position, but he trusts his receiver, and he hauled it down. Now it's first and five. I mean, fourth and five. Fourth and four. They're going to go for it. And he hands it off, and the ball carry is well short of the first down marker as both teams are going for it on fourth down. Especially for Caesar Rodney, they missed two key field goals against Sally's. And that's one reason uh, why they lost uh, in overtime. Well, Anthony, you asked me uh, what I thought was going to happen, and I had some uh, heads up. Uh, when I talked to some people in anticipation of this game, I heard everything from a low-scoring game, a defensive battle, to an offensive barn burner. So far, this is a defensive struggle. It's so far lived up to the high expectations. A first down and 10 at midfield. CR with the ball. Wing T formation. It's pitched on the far side to number 34. Slices his way. I believe that's Cody Connell to about the 45-yard line. And Middletown signaling that the ball came loose. And it certainly did, and they recovered it at the 445 mark in the second quarter. Six to nothing. CR on top. But that's a big turnover from the Riders. It is certainly a big turnover, and it was just the breath of life that the Cavaliers needed. It put a little wind in their sails, and now with four minutes and 45 seconds remaining, we got to wonder what uh, Del Percio will marshal his Cavaliers to do. And a CR uh, in that loss uh, to uh, Sally's, they had uh, one turnover, and uh, Sally's, uh, meanwhile, had one turnover. First down and 10, bought the 44-yard line of the Cavaliers. Wade in that shotgun formation. He's back to pass. It's complete at the 40-yard line. Now he makes his way to the 35-yard line and breaks a couple more tackles to about the 32-yard line. That was a quick release by Darius Wade on that crossing pattern to about the 33-yard line of CR. And Wade and Middletown, they're in business after the Caesar Rodney turnover. Well, they hit the big tight end Schneider, the uh, junior, uh, for the pass. And even though they had been going on the sidelines, they surprised them by going up the middle. First down and 10 at the 33-yard line of the Riders. Wade back in that shotgun. He's back to pass. The southpaw, it's complete. The Godwin short of the first down. Well covered. I believe that was an eight or nine yard gain. Clock continues to wind. 4.08 before halftime. Middletown still scoreless as CR, they're up six to nothing. And now it's going to bring up a second down and short. Ball placed at about that 25 yard line. Wade back in the shotgun. He's back to pass, and that's a slant pattern. Pass that first down marker near the Middletown Cavalier sidelines, and he's knocked out of bounds. Interesting uh, formation and plan by the Cavaliers. They put Godwin out wide on the left, and uh, that drew uh, his presence just drew the strong safety over there in Middletown taking advantage of the off-balance line, and they throw a little quick hitter to the right. It's a first down and 10, bought the 18-yard line of CR. Wade, shotgun, three wide receivers on the far side. He hands it off. They faked it to Godwin instead. It's a quarterback sneak for about a yard. There is a flag on the field. And it looks like the uh, Caesar Rodney uh, ball players are communicating with the officials, and it looks like they're going to kind of push them back a bit. It looks like the penalty holding against the Cavaliers. Holding against the Middletown. 
four big penalties against the Cavaliers. 3-11 in the second quarter. CR 6, Middletown 0. And Middletown going in the wrong direction on a first down now on about 19 at the 27-yard line. Wade, empty backfield, shotgun formation, two wide receivers on the left, two on the far. He's back to pass. Now he's now just going to tuck it and run. He's open space. He's at the 20, 15, 10. Now on this near side, 5, makes his way to about that 2-yard line as he had a big lane as he wanted to throw it downfield, but he had the running room. So that was just a great uh, vision and a heads-up play by uh, Darius Wade, but we do have another Caesar Rodney a rider down on the field. And I can certainly see why uh, Darius Wade is a tremendous threat. He does throw a beautiful ball, but he is nimble on his feet too. Darius Wade with the nimble feet like Jack. He be nimble. The injured uh, Caesar Rodney a player, LaShawn Miles, number two. The injured player earlier for Caesar Rodney was the defensive end, Brendan Moore. As he was okay, went to the sidelines. As Miles, he's still on the field, 244, and now he pops up. As CR6, Middletown 0. And it looks like Miles going to head to the sidelines. Still limping just a little bit. We have another uh, score to pass along at the out-of-town scoreboard. It's a final. Dover took on the Concord Raiders. Game time was at 3.30. The final, 26-14, as Dover now 1-1. One one. Concord drops to 0-2. It's a first down and goal at the five-yard line. Darius Wade directing traffic. Two wide receivers on the far. Man in motion number 12. This pitch to him on the far side. Now he goes up the middle. Dies for the end zone, and it's a Middletown touchdown. All right, Anthony, you talked about the kicking game, and looks like uh, the Gurlitz, little Claire Gurlitz, is going to come out there, uh, part of a real kicking dynasty of Gurlitzes who have played for Middletown. She has the opportunity to put the Cavaliers up for the first time in the contest. And Gerlitz for the extra point. Ball's down. It is up. And it is good as it gives Middletown the 7-6 lead at the 226 mark in the second quarter. And CR, John, they dominate for most of the first half. You have the costly turnover. Middletown has a turnover. CR has a turnover. And you get seven points off of that costly mistake. Heartbreaking, but the game isn't over. It's still two minutes and 26 seconds remaining in the first half. But it's unusual to hear the Magnificent Seven being played by a Cavalier band this late in the contest. 226 before halftime. Middletown strikes 7 to 6 against the Caesar Rodney Riders live in Camden. I'm Anthony Joseph. It's a non conference matchup. My broadcast partner, once again, John Martin. And Darius Wade getting ready to kick it off. Off the tee from the 40 yard line. Deep man for CR Kendall Wicks at about his own 10 yard line. And Wade kicks it downfield. Wicks. Sets a little short. It's going to be fielded at the 25. He's now at the 30. 35, and they push him back to about that 33-yard line. (laughs) 
2-17 before halftime. It's a first down and 10 at the 34-yard line of CR. Wing T formation. Kemp under center. Man in motion is number 23. Ball's pitched to him. He's at the, the 35, 40, 45-yard line and knocked out of bounds near the first down marker. I believe that was number 22. Number 23, Naquan Watkins on that carry. He is a senior, and even though at five foot four, he does pack a load because he does bring a little bit of speed to the collision. So first down and 10 at the 45. Handed off number 34 on that far side. And I was talking about uh, Cox. I was uh, trying to explain that he uh, was making uh, the stop of four of the Cavaliers as now we're back 144 before halftime. Anthony, it's almost halftime, and you did certainly set off the teaser. It's a second down and six at the 49. Wing T formation. Ball snaps, hand it off. Minimal gain, and that's Dominic Dorsey getting a lot of carries tonight. It's going to bring up a third down and about six. Clock continues to tick away. 108 before halftime. Middletown 7, CR 6 in a non-conference matchup in week number two. Kemp under center, wing T formation. He's back to pass. He's looking for his guy, Wicks. He's well covered, and he now he's going to run. Makes his way to about that 49-yard line. They tried to bring him down, and they could not. Instead, he ran for about three or four yards as he wanted to throw it to Wicks, but just good man-to-man -man coverage. Instead, a heads-up play, and you get a couple positive yards. Instead of taking a loss, it's... 26 seconds before halftime, a fourth and four. This could be the last play before halftime. Well, that's right, that's Anthony. That is exactly why every coach from Pop Warner to the pros tell you to keep your feet moving when you're on offense, and they tell you on defense, play to the whistleblowers and wrap them up. And Kemp, he's on the sidelines with Show and Wolf, and he takes a timeout with six seconds. It seems that uh, showing with uh, John, he wants to run the last play before halftime. He doesn't want to get Middletown any opportunity to be able to capitalize if they cannot convert on a fourth and four at the 48-yard line of CR. Uh, on one hand, that's conservative. On the other hand, it's also smart. Why not go ahead and regroup? You're only down one. You dominated the ball. Had the ball for most of the game, so uh, why not go in and reconfigure and come out ready for the second half? If you're Middletown and Coach Del Percio in the first half, you have some big penalties, but you recover. You have the one turnover. CR has the turnover, and now you're up seven to six. Six seconds before halftime, now showing Wolf back on the sidelines in his sixth season. This is gonna, gonna be the last play before halftime. Kemp under center, three wide receivers on that far side. It's got number six in the backfield. Anthony, they're and gonna Kemp go for it. Looking downfield, he's gonna let it go. Wicks is downfield, in and out of his hands as it was well defended by four Middletown Cavalier defenders. He threw the ball in traffic as Kemp, he was under pressure, threw it downfield, could not convert, but there is a flag at about that 48-yard line. Well, they're over there talking to Coach Del Percio and the Middletown Cavaliers, so it looks like they're going to let the Cavaliers make a decision, and they're already trotting off the sideline. So, Anthony, it does look like that was the last play of the uh, half. And that's the last play of the second quarter with the Middletown Cavaliers 7, the Caesar Rodney Ryder 6. You're listening to Friday Night Football under the lights on catchitlive.com and Hot Country 107.7. 
Is Del One Federal Credit Union right for you? If you live in Delaware, the answer is yes. All Delaware residents can become a member of Del One. Call us at 302 739 4496 or stop by any of our convenient branch locations throughout Delaware to find out how. Visit Del One.org for more information on the amazing benefits Del One Federal Credit Union has to offer. Become a member today. Conditions and restrictions apply. Equal opportunity lender. Deposits are federally insured by NCUA. When severe weather strikes, a Generac generator from Satterfield and Ryan will keep your home running smoothly and your family safe and secure. Satterfield and Ryan is Delaware's only elite power pro dealer, providing professional sales, superior service, and quality repairs. Satterfield and Ryan in Milford, online at DelawareGenerators.net. Call 302-422-4919. Satterfield and Ryan, get the job done right the first time. I'm Gary Rhodes from Milford Southern States. Expect nothing less than a superior performance day when using a Mahindra tractor. The Mahindra tractor can lift heavy loads and with its cast iron chassis it provides traction, stability, and control. At Milford Southern States we feature a full line of Mahindra tractors including the 3616 four-wheel drive that can carry firewood, dirt, manure, and also clear away snow. It also comes with a deluxe suspension and an easy access fuel tank. Call us at Milford Southern States 422-8066. Farmer owned since 1920. It'd sure be nice to get out of the house, get a change of scenery, and try the wonderful atmosphere and homestyle food of Smith's Family Restaurant. We'll treat you like you're coming to our house. We're known for great seafood, the best beef and chicken dumplings around, and you've got to try the homemade sweet potato biscuits and homemade rolls. A great place to eat anytime, seven days a week for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Smith's Family Restaurant. It's worth the drive to eat at Smith's. On Route 13 in Greenwood. Call 349-5114. Do you have metal? Get it to Fitzgerald Salvage and Recycling. Fitzgerald's pays you cash. Fitzgerald's will pick up your unwanted vehicles and will buy your car or lawnmower batteries. If it's made of metal, Fitzgerald's pays cash and recycles it, which helps the environment. Fitzgerald's will also pick up and deliver roll-off dumpsters, and they accept electronics too, including cell phones and computers. Fitzgerald's is local and family-owned since 1935. Jesus recycles people. Fitzgerald's recycles cars. This game is being brought to you by... Del One Federal Credit Union, Delaware Electric Co-op, Fitzgerald Salvage and Recycling, Milford Southern States, Smith's Family Restaurant, Satterfield and Ryan, and First State Chevrolet. You're listening to Friday Night Under the Lights with CatchItLive.com's Anthony Joseph on Hot Country 107.7 FM. <laughs> And we're back live in Camden. We're at halftime. Caesar Rodney now trails 7-6 to six to the Middletown Cavaliers. And, uh, John, you alluded uh, in the first half, how can the listeners listen to this game again? All they have to do is go to catchitlive.com and catch a replay of the game next week and hear all the exciting action what? and all the great advertisers that we have. That's right, you can, and uh, thanks to the power of technology, they're able to get a chance to go back, and that's probably pretty nice, too, for uh, the fans here and also for those ball players who would like to come back and hear some of the highlights because it is nice to come out and celebrate successes on Friday Night Lights, watching football with you, Anthony. As you can catch it on Hot Country 1077 and catch it live, and you can hear the first game, John, that we did and hear my one-on-one interview with Rich Gannon, the former NFL MVP of the Oakland Raiders. Last week's game in week number one, Milford and Kate. That's absolutely right, Anthony. And uh, boy, what a coup for you, Anthony, to be able to grab someone who is part of Delaware football royalty and get that private opportunity to uh, talk to him uh, someone who is known all the world over for being not just a brilliant football player, but an outstanding uh, mind of the game and a statesman. And, John, are you ready? Do you like candy? I, I love candy. <laughs> I, I do love candy. Now, I'll, I'll tell you why. That was a hint. NASCAR driver and candy. M&M's, the driver of the number 18 M&M's Toyota, Kyle Busch. No way. No way. Anthony, 
I don't know who it is that you know, but you always seem to get the great. John, I've been very, very blessed. That's all I can say. Blessed by the best. As the next week at halftime, it's going to be the Sussex Tech Ravens on the road in week number three, taking on the Milford Bucks. And at halftime, as we're getting ready for race weekend, September the 29th, that's when the big race is, the AAA 400 at the Monster Mile. And to promote it, I conducted an interview with uh, Kyle Bush, and we're going to play that next week uh, at halftime, the big game between the Ravens and the Bucks. Oh, Anthony, what a nice coup. And uh, also, isn't it awesome, too, that um, we do have the races at Dover Downs. It brings just uh, so much revenue, much needed revenue, that uh, eventually trickles its way down to our student athletes. Uh, some of those who are out there playing on the field and even to some of our bands. And by the way, Anthony, uh, to those who love music, the Cavalier Band versus the Ryder Band is just as intense a rivalry as the football game itself. And, John, before we go to break, we have another update. Cape taking on Archbishop Spalding in Maryland. In the third quarter, Archbishop 37, Cape 7, and that's a shocker. We're going to take another break as you're listening to CatchItLive.com and Hot Country 1077. Hey, love the oldies? Well, let's tune them in. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. Looking for something besides the same old song? The Boomer Show. 30 daily minutes of fun, facts, and information the whole family can use and enjoy. And the music? Great hits from the 50s, 60s, 70s, and every now and then the 80s, 90s, and today. But not just the same old, same old. Heard about enough of the same old? Download The Boomer Show each and every day. Just log on to theboomershow.podomatic.com. It's fun. And it's free, and you can listen when you're ready. I'm Scott Edward Phelps, and I hope you'll join me for The Boomer Show. Not just the same old, same old oldies. Trailers, trailers, trailers. Jim Weller here, and if you need a trailer, give me a call. Open and close, new, used, rusty, dusty, whatever. If you need a used trailer, give me a call. Got a used trailer you want to sell? Give me a call. Want to talk turkey? Give me a call. We look forward to hearing from you. Hey folks, Colin Walls here for Wall Service Center. Have you turned your car's AC on only to find out it's blowing hot air? Are you tired of the quick fix that only lasts a couple of days? If so, come see me at Wall Service Center. Wall Service Center has been automotive air conditioning specialist for over 50 years. Stop in. We're located on Northeast Front Street in downtown Milford. Or give us a call. 422-8110. Hey everybody, Jim Weller here from Wellers in Bridgeville. And today, let's talk about carports. Different roof styles, colors, shapes, sizes, lengths, widths, and so on. If you need a carport, call Wellers today. They include free delivery and setup right to your yard. Give me a call today. Catch it live, live streaming of your events in high-definition video to anywhere in the world. Call Jim at 337-7300, 337-7300, 337-7300. No event. You're listening to Friday Night Under the Lights with CatchItLive.com's play-by-play announcer, Anthony Joseph, on Hot Country 107.7 FM. And we're back live in Camden. We're at halftime. Middletown 7, CR 6. We have another score to pass along. And they're at halftime. The Indian River Indians hosting the Smyrna Eagles. And Indian River now has scored 7 to nothing over the Smyrna Eagles in a non-conference matchup in week number two. And, John, we're just happy to have another a fine a sponsor and talk about our newest sponsor, First State Chevy in Georgetown. Anthony, you're right. We are fortunate to be sponsored by First State Chevrolet on Route 113 in Georgetown, your one-stop shop for all of your automotive needs with new Chevrolet sales, service, and a collision center in one convenient location. Come see their professional, courteous staff and see why they put you the customer first. You can call them at 302-856-2521 or visit them on the web at firststatechevy.com. And they're located First State Chevy in Georgetown. Now, John, we're uh, at halftime. Middletown 7, CR 6. What are your thoughts so far? 
Well, I guarantee you uh, – I would love to have the DVD of the coaches' halftime speeches. I believe with a game seven to six and both teams uh, respecting one another, there's probably a great deal of uh, strategy, uh, a great deal of conversation, probably the assistant coaches breaking it down in little components, uh, going over those little details, because right now Middletown holds the slimmest possible margin. And if nobody scores after this, then they can walk away with a W. So. Um, I'm looking at the, def the defense to turn up, but also maybe little hints of that potent offense uh, that the Cavaliers have and a very efficient offense of the Caesar Rodney Riders as well as we uh, get ready for the second half. Now, John, at the end of the game, we have to make sure we nominate a player of the game. It's a Delaware Electric player of the game. So far, who stands out? Well, uh, so far... Uh, Darius Wade, who has had his hands uh, uh, in every play for the Cavaliers. He's done a beautiful job. And uh, I do like Kemp. Kemp is playing on both sides of the ball for the Riders. And um, he hasn't played an impeccable game, but he's been cool. He's been confident. He's been collected out there and just what the Caesar Rodney Riders need. And uh, for a Caesar Rodney, they got out front in the first quarter at the 11:28 mark. Jumped out six to nothing as Kemp uh, hooked up with uh, Seth Abrocious. And then the extra point attempt, it failed, so it was six to nothing. And then we had that costly turnover from the Caesar Rodney Riders. And Middletown capitalized with Darius Wade. And then after they scored, they tried the extra point attempt. It was good by Gerlitz. And now it's where we're at, seven to six at halftime. Well, even though they have both contributed and everybody's been out there, the linemen have done their jobs. The uh, backs have played a pretty good game. Uh, there have been some turnovers, and uh, rightfully so, but Gerlitz's perfect night so far has given them the one point that they need and the lead that they took into the halftime as both teams go in and strategize and get ready for the second half. I think uh, for uh, Caesar Rodney, they showed a lot of uh, energy. I think coming out of uh, halftime, they got to show that same emotion. And they really, I think, uh, need to come out and strike first, score, we'll say, a touchdown because they're not using the kicking game. It was ineffective uh, last week. So Coach Schoenwolf, I would say uh, his message uh, to his players is don't turn over the ball show a lot of effort, and just play your game with the senior experience. You have 28 seniors on this squad. Well, I, I will throw this at you too, uh, Anthony. A little birdie did tell me that uh, Sean Wolf was a quite capable quarterback for UD. Uh, he is a, a tactician. I've noticed that the field goal kicker for Cesar Rodney has been warming up. You got to wonder, you know, a team that's been, uh, perennially successful – probably prepares pardon the alliteration but i'm sure that they probably put a little bit of time in their cooking game uh just in the event that they may need that so um it's really i'm looking forward to an exciting second half of football and if you go back to the roots of a coach of show and wolf he runs that wing t formation made famous by tommy raymond the former university of delaware head coach i tell you what if the wing T was Amway, UD would be rich because it is one of those things that has been passed down all the way down to the pregame rituals, the cow line, everything, all signatures of a Tubby Raymond touched football program. We're going to take a timeout before kickoff of the third quarter. You're listening to Hot Country 1077 and also catchitlive.com. I'm Gary Rhodes from Milford Southern States. Expect nothing less than a superior performance day when using a Mahindra tractor. The Mahindra tractor can lift heavy loads, and with its cast iron chassis, it provides traction, stability, and control. At Milford Southern States, we feature a full line of Mahindra tractors, including the 3616 four-wheel drive that can carry firewood, dirt, manure, and also clear away snow. It also comes with a deluxe suspension and an easy access fuel tank. Call us at Milford Southern States, 422-8066. Farmer owned since 1920. It sure be nice to get out of the house. Get a change of scenery. 
and try the wonderful atmosphere and homestyle food of Smith's Family Restaurant. We'll treat you like you're coming to our house. We're known for great seafood, the best beef and chicken dumplings around, and you've got to try the homemade sweet potato biscuits and homemade rolls. A great place to eat anytime, seven days a week for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Smith's Family Restaurant. It's worth the drive to eat at Smith's on Route 13 in Greenwood. Call 349-5114. When severe weather strikes, a Generac generator from Satterfield and Ryan will keep your home running smoothly and your family safe and secure. Satterfield and Ryan is Delaware's only elite power pro dealer, providing professional sales, superior service, and quality repairs. Satterfield and Ryan in Milford, online at DelawareGenerators.net. Call 302-422-4919. Satterfield and Ryan, get the job done right the first time. Do you have metal? Get it to Fitzgerald's Salvage and Recycling. Fitzgerald's pays you cash. Fitzgerald's will pick up your unwanted vehicles and will buy your car or lawnmower batteries. If it's made of metal, Fitzgerald's pays cash and recycles it, which helps the environment. Fitzgerald's will also pick up and deliver roll-off dumpsters, and they accept electronics too, including cell phones and computers. Fitzgerald's is local and family-owned since 1935. Go to FitzgeraldsOnline.com or find us on Facebook. Is Del One Federal Credit Union right for you? If you live in Delaware, the answer is yes. All Delaware residents can become a member of Del One. Call us at 302-739-4496 or stop by any of our convenient branch locations throughout Delaware to find out how. Visit del-one.org for more information on the amazing benefits Del One Federal Credit Union has to offer. Become a member today. Conditions and restrictions apply. Equal opportunity lender. Deposits are federally insured by NCUA. You're listening to Friday Night Under the Lights with CatchItLive.com's play-by-play announcer, Anthony Joseph, on Hot Country 107.7 FM. Hey, love the oldies? Well, let's tune them in. Blah, blah, blah. It's the same old song. Blah, blah, blah. It's the same old song. Looking for something besides the same old song? The Boomer Show. 30 daily minutes of fun, facts, and information the whole family can use and enjoy. And the music? Great hits from the 50s, 60s, 70s, and every now and then the 80s, 90s, and today. But not just the same old, same old. Heard about enough of the same old? Download The Boomer Show each and every day. Just log on to theboomershow.podomatic.com. It's fun and it's free, and you can listen when you're ready. I'm Scott Edward Phelps, and I hope you'll join me for The Boomer Show, not just the same old, same old oldies. You know the voice. You know the game. And now here he is, the voice of Delaware High School football. Anthony Joseph! And we're back live in Camden. Getting ready to start the third quarter. Coming out of halftime as a Middletown 7, CR 6. And now Middletown's ready. Now to start the game, you had CR. They were on the field. They were energized, ready to go. Now Middletown just playing a little bit of a mind game. And now CR, they're ready to go. They're going to kick it off as Middletown going to start the third quarter with the ball. And, Anthony, you're right. That is an astute observation. And um, you got to wonder about those little bit of subtleties because there is a little bit of gamesmanship, um, a little bit of posturing. But... Um, it all comes down in the end to uh, who can get the ball either through the goal post or who can get it in the pay dirt. It is one point lead enjoyed by Middletown, and they're going to receive the ball on the kickoff. And Tim Steidel getting ready to kick it off the tee. Deep man for Middletown. About the 10. It's a short kick. And it went through the hands of the Middletown Cavalier special teamer. And CR pounced on it. And I think that's the second turnover for the Cavaliers. What a costly one. As they did not. Undecided still. 
John, basically what happened, you don't want to kick it deep to Godwin. It's a short kick. The up man was not really prepared, and it went through his hands. Well, again, it speaks to uh, just how deadly Godwin is. They're willing to give up good field position to make sure that they don't give up pay dirt. 11.57 to start the third quarter. Middletown 7, CR 6. And CR signaled that they recovered it, but they did not come away with it. Middletown ball, Darius Wade, shotgun formation, empty backfield. Ball snapped. He's back to pass. And the ball is batted down by number 48 for the Caesar Rodney defense. Good, solid football being played by the Caesar Rodney Riders. Um, playing good, solid defense, and of course, on offense, they're running that wing tee. A great offense that can lull you to sleep. Wade back to pass. Good looking ball, Anthony. And uh, that's near a first down marker. As that was a quick snap. It's going to bring up a short third down. And Coach Sean Wolf getting his defense ready. 11-22, third quarter, 7-6, Middletown with the lead. And the ball, third down and two at the 48. It's handed off on this near side, still on his feet. He's at the 45-40, 35-30, And that's still Godwin making his way to about the 14-yard line, and he is so dangerous. Yeah, but that second effort may have cost him. It looks like he got dinged on the leg, and the officials are going to pause the action and call for one of the trainers to go and take a look at Godwin. And that's the third injury uh, timeout. We had uh, two uh, so far for CR, and the first one for a Middletown, and that's a big-time player for a Middletown. That's right, Anthony. You don't ever want to see a ball player get play, get hurt. But when you talk about key components, you certainly got a mission Godwin. One of the peak performers. 11-01, third quarter. We're going to take a brief break as you're listening to CatchItLive.com and Hot Country 107.7. We'll be back after this. Trailers, trailers, trailers. Jim Weller here, and if you need a trailer, give me a call. Open and close, new, used, rusty, dusty, whatever. If you need a used trailer, give me a call. Got a used trailer you want to sell? Give me a call. Want to talk turkey? Give me a call. We look forward to hearing from you. Hey, folks, Colin Walls here for Wall Service Center. Have you turned your car's AC on only to find out it's blowing hot air? Are you tired of the quick fix that only lasts a couple of days? If so, come see me at Wall Service Center. Wall Service Center has been automotive air conditioning specialists for over 50 years. Stop in. We're located on Northeast Front Street in downtown Milford. Or give us a call, 422-8110. Hey, everybody. Jim Weller here from Wellers in Bridgeville. And today, let's talk about carports. Different roof styles, colors, shapes, sizes, lengths, widths, and so on. If you need a carport, call Wellers today. They include free delivery and setup right to your yard. Give me a call today. Catch it live, live streaming of your events in high-definition video to anywhere in the world. Call Jim at 337-7300, 337-7300, 337-7300. No and we're back to the action of first down and 10 at the 15. And the ball's handed off near the goal line as we're coming out of the injury timeout to Godwin. And they're short of the goal line as Wade just snapped it, handed off, and Caesar Rodney was caught sleeping. Anthony, uh, looks like Godwin, who uh, uh, scampered off, he was about to come back on the field, and they waved him off, so they're back under the center. And that was Dennis Berger on the carry. Quarterback sneak, and it is a touchdown as the official signaling touchdown. Well, Anthony, that's a pretty quick strike. It only took him one minute and 30 seconds to uh, achieve pay dirt. And they did look pretty confident as they uh, were able to aptly move the ball down the field. Gerlitz is back to kick. Gerlitz back for the extra point attempt. As Wicks waving his hands, trying to block it. 
It's up, and it is good. She's two for two. Now Middletown 14, CR6. We'll be back after this. Is Del One Federal Credit Union right for you? If you live in Delaware, the answer is yes. All Delaware residents can become a member of Del One. Call us at 302-739-4496 or stop by any of our convenient branch locations throughout Delaware to find out how. Visit del-one.org for more information on the amazing benefits Del One Federal Credit Union has to offer. Become a member today. Conditions and restrictions apply. Equal opportunity lender. Deposits are federally insured by NCUA. This game is being brought to you by Del One Federal Credit Union, Delaware Electric Co-op, Fitzgerald Salvage and Recycling, Milford Southern States, Smith's Family Restaurant, Satterfield and Ryan, and First State Chevrolet. You're listening to Friday Night Under the Lights with CatchItLive.com's Anthony Joseph on Hot Country 107.7 FM. We're back to the action as Wade kicks it off deep. Return man for CR to 10, 15, 20. And he's still on his feet, changing directions. And that's Miles making about the 20 yard line. And it looks like he was hauled down by the 11th grader, uh, Sewell. And he did a little small celebration uh, after the tackle. And certainly it uh, looks like the enthusiasm has picked up for the Middletown Cavaliers. But hey, the Looks like the Riders are still in it. They still seem a little bit focused, and uh, every indication by their body language is that they haven't given up. CR will never give up. First down and 10 at the 22. Wing T formation is pitched to number 23 on a counter, and he gets about a yard if he's lucky. That was a hard hit. And they're going to say he lost a couple yards. I thought at least uh, it was close to gain about a yard, but well, he did that's a little bit of a retreat when he ran back, Anthony. So uh, he he lost some uh, lost some turf. Second down and twelve. Kemp wants to throw it in and out of the hands of Kendall Wicks. There a first down. That was double coverage, incomplete pass. Ball was batted away. Justin Thompson uh, with the coverage for Middletown. 9.47, third quarter. Middletown 14, CR6. We're live in Camden. Non-conference showdown. I'm Anthony Joseph, joined by John Martin. It's going to bring up a third down in 12 at the 20-yard line of CR. And Sean Wolf and Alex Kemp, they need to gain the momentum. Kemp snaps it. Wing T formation. He throws it, intercepted, intended for Wicks again, double coverage, another big turnover. Anthony, there's plenty of time left in the game. Uh, You know, I can see a sense of urgency, but certainly no need to rush. Uh, As John Wooden would say, be quick but never in a hurry. But it looks like they hurried the pass, and uh, it was a tough mistake. And the Cavaliers will take over first and 10 on the Riders 30. And a Middletown has scored 14 to 6 as a Middletown extending of that lead here in the second half as a costly turnover. Excellent field position. First down and 10 at the 30 yard line. Wade. Under pressure, he's going to tuck it and run. He's at the 20, 15. Still on his feet about that 10-yard line. What a big lane. He wanted to throw it downfield, but that was a safe play with so much open field. Well, uh, it looks like he's oozing now with confidence. He's sitting back. He's rocking on his toes. He's bouncing. He's checking receivers. And then he feels so much confidence with his feet because he is a shifty runner and able to pick up a huge first down for the Cavaliers. And a Middletown scored for the second time at the 10:36 mark in the third quarter. Now we're at 9:13 after the turnover. So first down and 9 at the 9. Wade shotgun back to pass. 
He's got his man Godwin, lunges for the end zone, another touchdown for Middletown. Well, Anthony, we talked about it. We said it could be a defensive uh, contest Nightmare. in the second half, or the Cavaliers can show that they are an offensive juggernaut, and, the boy, they have come with two quick strikes. Anthony, what do you think the Riders are going to need to do to respond? I think uh, with uh, Coach Mike Schoenwolf, he's going to have to talk uh, – with Alex Kemp, Kendall Wicks, the seniors are on this team. And they're going to have to get the momentum back. Now back to the action. The extra point attempt is up by Gerlitz again. She's 3 of 3. Now at the 9-minute mark in the third quarter, 21-6 to is Middletown trying to pull away. And it's almost like a change in the air because now the fans – in the first half, they were cheering defense. They were on their feet when they scored that touchdown, the 11-28 mark. Now in the second half, they're silent. And this is a jam-packed crowd on hand with some uh, standing up along the fence. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you mentioned it, Anthony. Uh, it's still quite a large crowd. But uh, it looks like um, some of the uh, energy that we saw earlier, the enthusiasm when the Riders uh, scored early, has seemed to uh, wane a bit. But uh, Wade will be back to kick deep. And Kendall once again, Wicks. Kendall Wicks, Wicks will be uh, back deep, to return. Uh, at about the 10-yard line, Wade getting ready to kick it off. Off the tee. It's a short kick. And it goes out of bounds. And that's a penalty. It's a bounce in front of number two for Caesar Rodney. Arthur Miles, the senior. 5'8", 153. Should be a... Looks like it'll be an illegal procedure against the Cavaliers. And the Riders are going to... Force the Cavaliers to kick it again. Uh, Anthony, uh, what do you think about that? They could have either uh, taken field position or uh, gone for some gusto. Usually take uh, the 15 uh, yards, but instead they're going to elect to kick it off. Let uh, Kendall Wicks now, he's at about, we'll say the 17 yard line. Gives him an opportunity to run it back, score maybe six points. And, and even if he doesn't run it all the way back, Anthony, maybe a nice big run sort of energizes the team and the, uh, and the fans. Wade kicks it deep downfield. And Wicks backpedals. He's at the 20, 25, 30, 35. And it's going to be a good uh, field position. After the penalty as Wade kicked it out of bounds and Sean Wolf elected for Middletown to just kick it again. We're at the 8.53 mark. Third quarter, Middletown 21, CR6. Going to bring up a first down and 10 at the 35-yard line. And the senior, Alex Kemp, is going to have Kendall Wicks lined up as a wide receiver. It's on the far side, wing T formation. Man in motion, number 38, is handed off to him on that far side. He's on his feet near that first down marker for about a nine-yard run knocked out of bounds. Anthony, that run, a uh, big eight-yard run brings up uh, second and two for the Riders. And um, beautiful run executed by uh, the Riders. A nice little sweep. Uh, just another component of the wing tee. Second down and two at the 44-yard line of Caesar Rodney. Wing two formation, ball's pitched, and number 23 still on his feet. There's some running room on this near side. Makes his way to about that 45-yard line, near another first down. Another scoring uh, update. In the second half, Cape has scored 13 points, and now it's 37 to 20 as they are taking on Archbishop Spalding in Maryland on the road. And that's a first down for CR. Got that second effort, good spot by the chain gang. 747, third period. 
21 to six, Middletown out front. Wing T formation kept under center. Ball at the 45s, handed off. And I think he got about a two yard loss and that's DJ Johnson, number 33 for CR. Well, again, you know, anytime they run a wing T offense, uh, what it is, it's just a nice, patient offense where you pick up a few yards each way, but you have to you make the defense be honest on every single play. You better check every option. It's going to bring up a second down and long at the 45. Kent back to pass, and he throws it to number 23. He was wide open near a first down, but went right through his hands as he just looked up as he had open space. You're right. He was as open as a 7-11, but he just couldn't get it right there to him, Anthony. Um, and an unfortunate errant toss, and yet the Riders will try again, but it's third and ten. What do you think they'll do? After the incomplete pass, it is a pivotal third down and ten at the 45-yard line, 6:59, third quarter, 21-6, CR trailing. We'll see what Kemp and Schoenwolf do. Ball snap coming out of the wing tee formation. He's going to air it out downfield. He's got a man wide open. Can he connect? In and out of his hands. He was wide open. The crowd started to cheer, and it went right through his fingertips as that was Deshaun Schuler. That was an easy six. And that was an easy six, and you got to feel for that young man. I mean, it happens. Even the pros drop balls, but, man, he had nothing but pay dirt in front of him. You feel bad for the players because you talk about it. When you're wide open like that, you know you should make it, but we're only human and we make mistakes. It's a fourth down and ten after the incomplete pass at the 45 and Kemp. It's a short kick, and it's... Marked at about that 20-yard line. It was taking a couple extra Caesar Rodney bounces, and it finally stopped as a Middletown elected a not to uh, pick it up and run with it. We're at the 641 mark in the third quarter. Middletown 21, CR 6. And we'll, we'll see if uh, CR John can pin the Middletown offense. They'll need to stop them, but the Cavaliers walked out with just a little bit of a sense of purpose and a sense of business. Uh, nothing fancy, just looking like they're coming back out and reporting for work. Wade under center. Man in motion, Godwin. He's handed off. Near side, still on his feet, breaks a couple tackles. And spins his way to about the 30-yard line. Kendall Wicks, the free safety, making the stop. And Middletown does the same kind of a fantastic job that the Riders do in making all of their offensive options a uh, potential threat. So while one team may want to key on certain players, you still better not leave any player unchecked. Anthony. It's a second down and two at the 28. Wade, shotgun formation. Two wide receivers on the near, two on the far. CR looks like they're going to blitz. Ball snapped. They pick up the blitz. And the southpaw Wade throws it to an intended target. Complete Berger on the far side past the first down marker. And the offensive line picked up the CR blitz. That's right. They did uh, pick up the blitz. And they had a couple of stunners as well. And it looks like uh, Caesar Rodney, I mean, you got a very intelligent uh, ball players and a great coaching staff uh, perhaps trying to uh, induce the Cavaliers to throw one into some coverage and perhaps get a turnover. Back After to you. the first down by Berger, falls at the 38-yard line now of Middletown. Shotgun formation. One running back in the backfield. Two wide receivers on that far side. Ball snapped. Southpaw throws it. It's too low. Incomplete pass. John, we have another scoring update. Let's see for the got, listeners, Anthony. at the end of the third quarter, the Indian River Indians 14, Smyrna Eagles 0. Well, what kind of year do you anticipate for uh, either one of those teams, Anthony? Well, Indian River, they lost the last week to Stephen Decatur, 
next week. They're on the road taking on the Cape Vikings. So oh. they need this victory to be one and one because next week, Cape, they're going to be back home, really, for the first time this season. They Their first two games on the road. It's a second down and 10 at the 37. It's a high snap. And Wade throws it downfield to Godwin. It's complete, 25-20. 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Middletown. Oh, that's right, Anthony. And the big difference between that big pass is that Godwin looked it all the way in and secured the pass before he took off and started running. Big difference right there and a loss of a potential six by Caesar Rodney, a return of six by the Cavaliers, and a heaping dose of disappointment. And, John, we talked about uh, Godwin earlier. Last year as a first-team All-State selection at three positions and on offense, 834 yards, 12 touchdowns, 42 passes. He is an impressive athlete, and um, from what I'm told, he is quite a fine, outstanding young man as well. Gerlitz for the fourth time for the extra point. It is up, and she is good again. Listen, Anthony, you're talking about trying to select the um, most outstanding player. Looks like you're going to have your hands full. That's for sure. At the end of the game, the Delaware Electric player of the game. It's a tough task, but I have you to help me out. Steer me in that right direction. Anthony, I look forward to it. Speaking of things to look forward to, you were telling me that uh, you were able to secure a sweet interview. Yes, the so next uh, week it's the Sussex Tech Ravens taking on the Milford Bucks, and we will have an exclusive on Hot Country with Kyle Bush, driver of the number 18 M and M's Toyota. Outstanding, Anthony. I don't know how you do it, but you seem to know the right people. You seem to be at the right place. And tonight, as always, you're doing the right thing. We're into third quarter, 5-11, Middletown. They continue to pile up the points on the scoreboard. It's now 28-6. And everybody is shocked from the players to the fans and even the broadcast team. Wade kicks it. At the 40, it's deep, downfield, retrieved at the 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, still on his feet, the 40. About that 45-yard line, and Kendall Wicks, he needed to provide a spark, and he did for Alex Kemp and Mike Schoenwolf, their head coach. He's a pretty good ball player, and he's very reliable, and uh, he's been able to produce some big plays, and uh, they're going to need to score because... You know, this week, as in last week, after an initial score by the home team, the Cavaliers have come in here and they've run off 28 straight points. We're at the 5:01 mark in the third quarter. First down and 10, ball officially at the 46. Kemp under center, wing T formation, man in motions, number 34. He's back to pass, he's under pressure. It's in and out of the hands of number 23, Daquan Watkins, the halfback for CR. And the quarterback did take a little peek downfield, but there again, you know, that was Godwin, your three-position all-state pick. So uh, that's a tall order to uh, throw one back there to someone who's got such great hands. It's a second down and 10 after the incomplete pass to Watkins. Ball still at the 46. Kemp under center. Hands it off. That's Watkins still on his feet. He's got some running room. Breaks a couple tackles, but the ball is loose. And I believe CR recovered it back at the 40-yard line. Oh, that's right. It looks like it was recovered by Jack Bobell. He is a sophomore, and what a fortuitous bounce because I don't think at this juncture the Riders want to suffer another turnover. It's a 425 mark for CR as they are down 28 to 6. It's going to bring up a big third down and nine at the 47. Ball's handed off straight ahead to Watkins. He gets close to a first down, and that's going to depend on the spot. And when you talk about scrappy ball players, you better mention Watkins. Uh, despite his diminutive five foot four frame 
He is a tough person to take down on one first hit. He seems to keep bouncing and churning and breaking tackles, and he is giving the Riders a little bit of a spark to keep them mentally, if not in terms of points in the game. And last week against the Sallies, the CR had 44 rushing attempts. So fourth down and one. They did not get the first down. Kemp under center. Man in motion is number 38. Spec quarterback sneak. He does. Straight ahead running. He's pushing that pile, and I think he got enough on that last surge. Ball was at the 46-yard line of Middletown. Middletown signaling they didn't get it, but it's going to depend on the spot. I thought he got it. Well, Anthony, there's always a great deal of salesmanship going on out there when they are trying to convince the officials, but they're never really swayed. That's why they wear the stripes. They go through an awful lot of training, an awful lot of conditioning, and they use their keen vision and their instruments to really determine what's going on. And so it looks like, Anthony, for the first time, they're going to bring the chains out on the field. 3-18 in the third quarter as Middletown 28, C.R. Swicks 6. And I'm looking up, and the Middletown players are jumping up and down as C.R. did not get the first down. Now, Anthony, that was a disappointing uh, fourth down attempt. They came awfully close, and you've got to wonder, if you're the coaching staff or if you're a fan, what do you do to try to keep your team in the game? I mean, you've got the pieces, but Middletown has run off 20 straight, uh, straight points. Middletown is showing why they are the defending state champions. They've won two state championships in a row and looking for a third it's a first down and 10, bought the 45-yard line. Wade hands it off, and there's a penalty as the ball carrier slips past the first down marker at about, say, the 43-yard line. So he's going to call over a representative of the Riders. That uh, is usually an indication that it's against the opposing team. And CR, this is big for them. They needed a big break as the penalties in the first half were very costly, and that's what really kept the score down. And also good defense by CR. I mentioned it in the pregame. How do you stop Wade and Godwin? The best way is make sure that you stay on the field, score a lot of points, and keep time of possession in your favor. Ah, uh, yes, yes, indeed, time. And that's a big penalty as the mall now, a ball now backed up to about the 36-yard line of the Cavaliers as some of the players having to make sure they have their shoes tied and ready to go. Officials conversing with one another. Showing Woof, his hands on his hips, He's got to keep his players fired up. 3-10 remaining in this third quarter. This is a big first down and 19. CR is going to have to step up and stop him. Wade under center. Two wide receivers on the far, one on this near. He's back to pass again. Talk about Wade. There's a penalty. He's going to tuck it and run at the 40. 45-50. 40 yard line now to about. The 35-yard line of CR, but don't forget there's a penalty at about the 30-yard line, and that's a hold against the Cavaliers. That's going to negate that big run by Darius Wade. Now that's two straight holdings, and you got to wonder now if uh, Coach Del Percio has done a little bit of a personnel change because uh, they weren't doing it like that. Maybe he might be putting some inexperienced ball players in, trying to get them a chance. It is the second game of the season the second night of Friday Night Lights. And we'll take a look and see, because if there's a substitution made, it might make us think that uh, he's got a couple of uh, newbies out on the field. John, it's a hot and humid night. And like you said, the second game of the season. So he's going to rotate some players in and out. And you're probably now getting to uh, the second team. A lot of these players play both ways, and they have to get tired even though they're young. 
particularly as you mentioned on a hot and humid night. It's a first down now and 36 at the 24. You get, the first down is at about the 45 yard line of CR. Ball's thrown to the intended wide receiver. It is complete. It's about five yards for Chris Godwin. They're going to have to make sure that they double cover him the rest of the evening. Well, and when you do that, you create a couple of mismatches out there. And Middletown, they will, they have a lot of confidence in some of their lesser-known ball players. I mean, many of their ball players who aren't marquee names would still be standouts on some other teams. 223, third quarter, 28 to 6. Middletown with the lead and the ball. Second down and 25 now at their own 32-yard line. Man in motion. Number 12's handed off. Uh-oh, straight ahead. There's a big gap up the seam. He's at the 40. The 30, 20, 10. Nobody's going to catch him. Touchdown. James Reed and John, you made a good point. My philosophy, you double-team Godwin. Well, that opens up the running game, and there was a big hole up front so what do you do? Anthony, you get 11 ball players on both sides. If you double up on somebody, somebody's left open. And unfortunately for the Caesar Rodney Riders, but fortunately for the Cavaliers, this young man was able to go down untouched and score a touchdown. 34 to 6, 159, third quarter. Gerlitz again, it's the fifth time. It's up, and she connects again. And she is steady as a metronome. Every time she swings her leg, just like the swinging arm of a metronome, she is right on beat. John, we have a new sponsor this evening. First State Chevy. Take it away. Let me tell you about First State Chevrolet. You can find them on Route 113 in Georgetown, your one-stop shop for all of your automotive needs. New Chevrolet sales service, and a collision center in one convenient location. Come see their professional, courteous staff and see why they put you, the customer, first. Call them at 302-856-2521, where you can visit them on the web at firststatechevy.com. And that's First State Chevy in Georgetown. Glad to have them on board. And CR waiting the kickoff of Darius Wade. They have rattled off 35 straight points. And there's Wade kicking it off. And Kendall Wicks deep, standing at about his 15-yard line. Short kick, fielded by the up main at the 30s, at the 35, 40-yard line. And Del Percio taking a page out of Coach Mike Schoenwolf. You don't kick it deep. To Kendall Wicks. He was about at that 15, 16 yard line. Instead, he kept it, kick it to the up man, and he takes it to about the 40 yard line. We're at the 154 mark in the third quarter, 35 to 6. That's right. Both teams uh, recognize uh, how deadly the return men are and being more safe than sorry. Kemp under center, wing T formation. Ball's handed off. That's Watkins. And number 78 with the penetration. He gets the ball carry in the backfield for a couple yard loss. That was number 78, Markel Weldon, the defensive end. And he is only a sophomore. And once again, that talent rich Cavalier team with sophomores, even freshmen out there contributing. So there is a MOT pipeline and a very respectable one at that. It's a second down and long. Ball's pitched on the far side, number 38, still on his feet. And that's a minimal gain. And John coming into this game, it was a showdown between Middletown and CR. It was a highly anticipated match, and um, it's a great game every year. But uh, this time, uh, with us drawing to a near the third quarter, the, 
the uh, Caesar Rodney fans and the team are feeling that 35 straight points put up by the Cavaliers. Third down and 11 at the 39. Wing T formation, Kemp looking downfield. He's looking for his man, Wicks. Said he was well covered. Tucks it and runs. And knocked out of bounds at about the 45-yard line of well, Middletown. There is a flag at midfield. And that's going to be a big one, too. He tossed that one mile high, and it looks like from here it might be preliminary, but he might have given him a horse collar tackle. And that has been outlawed. So uh, we'll wait and see what the actual indication is. 34 seconds before the end of the third period. Middletown, 35, CR6. And it does look like Coach Del Percio has made a handful of substitutions, and even Godwin is trotting off the field. Uh, you mentioned earlier he was a, a real standout. Three, three particular positions, first team All-State. What's he going to be doing next year? We'll get to that in a minute. First down and 10 at the 41. Ball is handed off, off tackle for a couple yards. As it seems like um, Sean Wolf wants to keep pounding it. That's what you do with the wing T formation. 17 seconds left in the third quarter. We'll see if they snap, snap it and run one more play. They do hustle to the starting line. Three seconds. Kemp under center. Second down and nine at the 39. They get it off in time. He's looking downfield. Looks downfield. Wicks wide open. In and out of his hands as the free safety came over and knocked away the ball for the incomplete pass. And that'll do it. The end of the third quarter. Middletown 35, CR6. You're listening to catchitlive.com and hot country 1077 we'll be back after this trailers 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 jim weller here and if you need a trailer give me a call open and close new used rusty dusty whatever if you need a used trailer give me a call got a used trailer you want to sell give me a call want to talk turkey give me a call we look forward to hearing from you hey folks colin walls here for wall service center have you turned your car's ac on only to find out it's blowing hot air are you tired of the quick fix that only lasts a couple of days if so, come see me at Wall Service Center. Wall Service Center has been automotive air conditioning specialists for over 50 years. Stop in. We're located on Northeast Front Street in downtown Milford. Or give us a call, 422-8110. Hey, everybody. Jim Weller here from Wellers in Bridgeville. And today, let's talk about carports. Different roof styles, colors, shapes, sizes, lengths, widths, and so on. If you need a carport, call Wellers today. They include free delivery and setup right to your yard. Give me a call today. Catch it live, live streaming of your events in high definition video to anywhere in the world. Call Jim at 337-7300, 337-7300, 337-7300. No event. This game is being brought to you by Dell One Federal Credit Union, Delaware Electric Co-op, Fitzgerald Salvage and Recycling, Milford Southern States, Smith's Family Restaurant, Satterfield and Ryan, and First State Chevrolet. And we're back into the action. Third down and nine at the 39-yard line. Straight ahead running. And he's not going to get enough for the first down. But I would say they would go for it on fourth down. It's going to be fourth down and seven for the Riders. And Coach Mike Schoenwolf has gone for a, a, lot of, um, a lot of fourth downs tonight as he does not have confidence in uh, the kicking game. And it's really changed the field position when you go for fourth, when you um, go on fourth down a lot and you don't capitalize. Anthony, that's a sharp observation. You're right. Uh, we talk about football, and it's a game of uh, inches and possessions. And, you know, that's a high risk, high reward. Uh, but uh, this time they've really uh, had suffered because they've lost field position, and some of those have been oh so close. So you got to wonder how that also plays on their psyche. And Kemp on that play, rolled to his right, incomplete pass, as now Middletown going to take over on downs. And that's the problem when you go for it on fourth and you don't make it. 11-17, just underway in the fourth quarter, 35-6. to 
as we thought, or I really thought, and a lot of the, the media and the fans, that this was going to be a high-scoring affair, but a very close game that went down to the closing minutes. And this is definitely a shocker. Ball is handed off on that far side, and he makes his way past that first down marker, and that's James Reed, I think near the 49-yard line. And Reed has a touchdown for the Cavaliers. He is having a big night, and, uh, you know, why not? They have certainly been uh, tenderized a bit by the potent offense of the Cavaliers. At this point, every option seems deadly. Uh, Ten minutes and 45 seconds remaining in the entire contest. Second night of Friday Night Lights. Second week in a row for Friday Night the Lights. And next week, we're going to be live in Milford, as will be the Milford Bucks hosting the Sussex Tech Ravens. First down and 10, 49-yard line of Middletown. Darius Wade had an outstanding evening and still in the game, the senior, four-year starter. He's headed to Boston College, and Chris Godwin headed to Penn State. You know, that's a, that's a dead ball against Middletown, false start. You know, uh, an awful lot of uh, ball players from Dover have found their way at Boston College. Um, you got to wonder if there's some kind of a connection. Is there an alumni connection? What makes them come down here to uh, fertile Delaware to look for ball players? Well, we had a. Uh, We've had a lot of uh, good players over the last couple years, especially good offense alignment. Back to the action, a first down of 15 at the 43. Hand it off. That's Godwin still on his feet, spinning, breaking a couple tackles near midfeet, still on his feet to about that 45-yard line, and they keep hitting him and trying to tackle him, and he keeps on moving his feet and getting more yards. Anthony, with nine minutes and 30 seconds, um, how long do you think they'll keep their primary athletes out there in a contest that, well, when there's time, the game is never over, but they certainly do have a comfortable lead? I would say probably Del Percio would wait till about that three or four minute mark. Wade, under center, hands it off. That's Reed. Minimal gain. Even though the senior players are still in for Coach Del Percio, instead of way throwing it downfield as he was earlier in the second half, he's just handing it off, trying to eat up clock as we're in the final stanza, 847, Middletown 35, CR 6. And CR, it looks like, is going to drop to 0-2 on the season. And next week, another non-conference matchup against the Hots and Eagles. It's back at home, as in week number four, they open up conference play against the Cape Vikings. Wade under center, two wide receivers near side, one on the far, now he's in motion. And that's Godwin, he wants to throw it, and he does. Back to Wade, a little trick play, incomplete, as the players still trying to have fun. And I would say um, Wade has probably been to Del Percio saying, let me catch a ball during the season or maybe even tonight. And when you have the big lead, you have a chance that you can do that because you're not in jeopardy of losing it. Well, you're not in jeopardy of losing, but you are in jeopardy of maybe making the other team say, what are you doing to me? And remember, teams always remember. I wonder, uh, John, as uh, last year Dover took on Sally's, it was early in the season, and it seemed like they never recovered because they were so physical. Now, in week number one, you have a heartbreaking loss, and then you have to face Middletown, so just not an easy task for CR. Well, it isn't an easy task. As uh, Wade runs on fourth down past the first down marker, makes his way to about the 40-yard line in CR territory, and Coach is showing Wolf 
has not shied away from scheduling some of the best opponents in his non-conference schedule. That's right. Well, this is a traditional game. This is the second game of the season every year. But you got to think that Cesar Rodney gets a little bit of an advantage. If they can come out of these games, and if even without a win, if they learn something, if they're looking further down the road, they might be ready come tournament time if they can pull off the rest of the wins in their conference games. It's a first down and 10, 40-yard line. Wade still in, hands it off. Number 16, that's Berger. Small and that's, gain. That's a big tackle by Zachary Parker. He's a senior, six foot one, 253 pounds, and he was able to wrap the ball player up and give just a little bit of a burst of energy to the Caesar Rodney fans. Seven minutes to go in this contest. Middletown 35, CR6. Coming up after the game, we will have the out-of-town scoreboard. Wade, shotgun on a second down and 11 at the 41. High snap, back to pass. He throws it. And that's number 18. And CR wrapping up at the ankles, a good tackle. As it's a third down and five at the 35. And that Trying catch was made by drive. six foot five Garrett Maniatis. He is a six foot five target, so pretty easy to see. Surprising that he's just now caught his first ball of the evening. I think one reason is Godwin has been uh, the Main target for Darius Wade. Third down and five at that 35, and there's the penalty markers. Three of them, a lot of dirty laundry. And that's against Middletown. I think John wins CR when they were dominating the first half. They could not pull away. And I think it allowed Middletown to stay in the game, even with all the penalties. And once they gain that momentum, they have not looked back and they've kept their foot on the accelerator the rest of the game. Anthony, they dominated the ball. They dominated the clock in the first uh, half. But that, that score at the end was really uh, painful. Third down and 10, high snap, way back to pass. It's complete. And that's Berger at the 30, 25-20. One man to beat, 10-5, lunges for the touchdown. He breaks the plane. And Middletown scores again. And Berger is having a great game. And uh, he wasn't being a ham, but he did dive at the end. But here we are now. And Anthony, just like we saw last week, you get that critical 35 points advantage. And then something happens. Tell us a little bit about the sportsmanship rule and what happens if there's a 35-point uh, differential. John, like uh, last week's a game between uh, Milford and Cape, the uh, clock uh, will continue to run unless you take a timeout. That's the only way to stop it. Now ready for the extra point attempt. Sixth attempt. It's up, and it is low, and it is no good. It's the first time she's missed this evening as Middletown 41, CR6. Anthony? She has been perfect all night. Last week, we saw an amazing contest where the home team scored first, and then the final score was 41-6. to six. Coincidence? I think it just shows even though you jump out on top, you have to uh, continue to play, show that effort, and extend the lead and not be content with the early advantage. In CR tonight, they faced a team that's so talented. You have Darius Wade and Chris Godwin. And how do you stop those two players? We mentioned that in the pregame, and I don't know how you do it. It's tough. If you got talent and preparation, uh, that's a pretty potent combination. And CR back on the field waiting the kick, 344, before this game is all wrapped up. 41-6, Darius Wade going to kick it off the tee. 
Now, I'll tell you, this is interesting. They still got Wade out there. He's one of the best ball players the state has ever seen. They're squib kicking. Um, I could squib kick the ball. You got to wonder why they still have Wade out there doing something that uh, perhaps another person could do. Wade. Now he's getting ready, waiting for the officials to blow that whistle. And they do, and we're back to action. It's a deep kick, fielded at the 20, 25, 30, 35, and forced out of bounds at about that 35-yard line. 245, fourth quarter, Middletown 41, CR6. That was 245 and ticking. The sportsmanship rule has kicked in, and the clock continues to run like sand through the hourglass. Ball snap, Kemp still in the game. Hand off number 24. And that's Connell, the ball carrier. Anthony, a few diehard fans still remain, although a few have headed for the exit sign. Two minutes to go. In this game, 41-6. to six. Wing T formation kept under center, main in motion. Number 23, ball's handed off straight ahead. Number 34 making his way near midfield. And that's Cody Connolly making a nice run. The senior, six foot, 174. Well, Anthony, you've got about one minute and 30 seconds remaining. Barring anything uh, remarkable, have you started to hone in on who you might have for your pick of the player of the game? It's between two. First down and 10 at the 47. Ball's handed off. Straight ahead. They don't get much on that. Run up the middle. Clock continues to run as the fans continue to fall out. It's a packed house for this non-conference game. High expectations. It was billed as a showdown between CR and Middletown. Second down and eight. Handed off to number 34. Connell once again. Third down and one for Caesar Rodney. 31 seconds. Should be the final play of this contest. There's a couple players rotating in and out. Number 51 going to the sidelines for CR. Kemp gets the play. Should be the last one. Third down and two at the 44. Shot, or uh, excuse me, wing tee formation. Ball's handed off. Number 34 still on his feet going out of bounds. Three seconds and two penalties. Two flags on the field, and I think that was a late hit, but Middletown, they're going to the sidelines, and CR is lining up to shake uh, hands. And it is a personal foul against uh, Middletown. Well, it was a personal foul, but it even looks like the officials are getting ready to head for the showers. And while we really did think it was going to be a shootout in the end, the Cavaliers outshot them 41 to 6. And for the second consecutive week, we've seen those numbers. Tough, tough loss for the home team both times. But in the end, once again, great sportsmanship. And that was a late to hit. But uh, the officials waving it off as that's going to do it as the Middletown Cavaliers storm back from a 6-0 deficit to rally and win the game 41-6. You're listening to CatchItLive.com and Hot Country 1077. We'll be back after this. 
Is Del One Federal Credit Union right for you? If you live in Delaware, the answer is yes. All Delaware residents can become a member of Del One. Call us at 302-739-4496 or stop by any of our convenient branch locations throughout Delaware to find out how. Visit del-one.org for more information on the amazing benefits Del One Federal Credit Union has to offer. Become a member today. Conditions and restrictions apply. Equal opportunity lender. Deposits are federally insured by NCUA. When severe weather strikes, a Generac generator from Satterfield and Ryan will keep your home running smoothly and your family safe and secure. Satterfield and Ryan is Delaware's only elite power pro dealer, providing professional sales, superior service, and quality repairs. Satterfield and Ryan in Milford, online at DelawareGenerators.net. Call 302-422-4919. Satterfield and Ryan, get the job done right the first time. I'm Gary Rhodes from Milford Southern States. Expect nothing less than a superior performance day when using a Mahindra tractor. The Mahindra tractor can lift heavy loads and with its cast iron chassis, it provides traction, stability, and control. At Milford Southern States, we feature a full line of Mahindra tractors, including the 3616 four-wheel drive that can carry firewood, dirt, manure, and also clear away snow. It also comes with a deluxe suspension and an easy access fuel tank. Call us at Milford Southern States, 422-8066. Farmer owned since 1920. It'd sure be nice to get out of the house, get a change of scenery, and try the wonderful atmosphere and homestyle food of Smith's Family Restaurant. We'll treat you like you're coming to our house. We're known for great seafood, the best beef and chicken dumplings around, and you've got to try the homemade sweet potato biscuits and homemade rolls. A great place to eat anytime, seven days a week for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Smith's Family Restaurant. It's worth the drive to eat at Smith's on Route 13 in Greenwood. Call 349-5114. Do you have metal? Get it to Fitzgerald Salvage and Recycling. Fitzgerald's pays you cash. Fitzgerald's will pick up your unwanted vehicles and will buy your car or lawnmower batteries. If it's made of metal, Fitzgerald's pays cash and recycles it, which helps the environment. Fitzgerald's will also pick up and deliver roll-off dumpsters, and they accept electronics too, including cell phones and computers. Fitzgerald's is local and family-owned since 1935. Jesus recycles people. Fitzgerald's recycles cars. You're listening to Friday Night Under the Lights with CatchItLive.com's play-by-play announcer, Anthony Joseph, on Hot Country 107.7 FM. Hey, love the oldies? Well, let's tune them in. Blah, blah, blah. It's the same old song. Blah, blah, blah. It's the same old song. Looking for something besides the same old song? The Boomer Show. 30 daily minutes of fun, facts, and information the whole family can use and enjoy. And the music? Great hits from the 50s, 60s, 70s, and every now and then the 80s, 90s, and today. But not just the same old, same old. Heard about enough of the same old? Download The Boomer Show each and every day. Just log on to theboomershow.podomatic.com. It's fun and it's free. And you can listen when you're ready. I'm Scott Edward Phelps and I hope you'll join me for The Boomer Show. Not just... The same old, same old oldies. Tonight's game was brought to you by First State Chevrolet, Satterfield and Ryan, Smith's Family Restaurant, Milford Southern States, Fitzgerald Salvage and Recycling, Delaware Electric Co-op, and Del One Federal Credit Union. Trailers, trailers, trailers. Jim Weller here, and if you need a trailer, give me a call. Open and close, new, used, rusty, dusty, whatever. If you need a used trailer, give me a call. Got a used trailer you want to sell? Give me a call. Want to talk turkey? Give me a call. We look forward to hearing from you. Hey, folks, Colin Walls here for Wall Service Center. Have you turned your car's AC on only to find out it's blowing hot air? Are you tired of the quick fix that only lasts a couple of days? If so, come see me at Wall Service Center. Wall Service Center has been automotive air conditioning specialists for over 50 years. Stop in. We're located on Northeast Front Street in downtown Milford. Or give us a call, 422-8110. Hey, everybody. Jim Weller here from Wellers in Bridgeville. And today, let's talk about carports. Different roof styles, colors, shapes, sizes, lengths, widths, and so on. If you need a carport, call Wellers today. They include free delivery and setup right to your yard. Give me a call today. Catch it live, live streaming of your events in high definition video to anywhere in the world. Call Jim at 337-7300, 337-7300, 337-7300. No event too small. Now here's the voice of Delaware High School football, Anthony Joseph. <laughs>
And we're back live in Camden as the Caesar Rodney Riders fall to 0-2 to start the season. They lose to the Middletown Cavaliers 41-6 as the Middletown Cavaliers showed why they are the defending state champions and are looking for a third straight consecutive state championship. We have another scoring update to pass along. The Indian River Indians at home taking on the Smyrna Eagles. It's now final as Indian River 14, Smyrna 0, as Indian River now 1-1 one one on the season, as Smyrna, meanwhile, 0-2. Cape will take on the Indian River Indians next week. At home, it's going to be the home opener for the Cape Vikings and Coach Bill Collick. Meanwhile, we will be back in Milford for the Milford Bucks hosting the Sussex Tech Ravens. We're going to take another timeout as you're listening to Friday Night Football under the lights on catchitlive.com and Hot Country 107.7. I'm Gary Rhodes from Milford Southern States. Expect nothing less than a superior performance day when using a Mahindra tractor. The Mahindra tractor can lift heavy loads, and with its cast iron chassis, it provides traction, stability, and control. At Milford Southern States, we feature a full line of Mahindra tractors, including the 3616 four-wheel drive that can carry firewood, dirt, manure, and also clear away snow. It also comes with a deluxe suspension and an easy-access fuel tank. Call us at Milford Southern States, 422-8066. Farmer-owned since 1920. It'd sure be nice to get out of the house, get a change of scenery, and try the wonderful atmosphere and homestyle food of Smith's Family Restaurant. We'll treat you like you're coming to our house. We're known for great seafood, the best beef and chicken dumplings around, and you've got to try the homemade sweet potato biscuits and homemade rolls. A great place to eat anytime, seven days a week for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Smith's Family Restaurant. It's worth the drive to eat at Smith's. On Route 13 in Greenwood. Call 349-5114. When severe weather strikes, a Generac generator from Satterfield and Ryan will keep your home running smoothly and your family safe and secure. Satterfield and Ryan is Delaware's only elite power pro dealer, providing professional sales, superior service, and quality repairs. Satterfield and Ryan in Milford, online at DelawareGenerators.net. Call 302-422-4919. Satterfield and Ryan, get the job done right the first time. Do you have metal? Get it to Fitzgerald Salvage and Recycling. Fitzgerald's pays you cash. Fitzgerald's will pick up your unwanted vehicles and will buy your car or lawnmower batteries. If it's made of metal, Fitzgerald's pays cash and recycles it, which helps the environment. Fitzgerald's will also pick up and deliver roll-off dumpsters, and they accept electronics too, including cell phones and computers. Fitzgerald's is local and family-owned since 1935. Go to FitzgeraldsOnline.com or find us on Facebook. Is Del One Federal Credit Union right for you? If you live in Delaware, the answer is yes. All Delaware residents can become a member of Del One. Call us at 302-739-4496 or stop by any of our convenient branch locations throughout Delaware to find out how. Visit del-one.org for more information on the amazing benefits Del One Federal Credit Union has to offer. Become a member today. Conditions and restrictions apply. Equal opportunity lender. Deposits are federally insured by NCUA. Tonight's game was brought to you by First State Chevrolet, Satterfield and Ryan, Smith's Family Restaurant, Milford Southern States, Fitzgerald Salvage and Recycling, Delaware Electric Co-op, and Del One Federal Credit Union. Is Del One Federal Credit Union right for you? If you live in Delaware, the answer is yes. All Delaware residents can become a member of Del One. Call us at 302-739-4496 or stop by any of our convenient branch locations throughout Delaware to find out how. Visit del-one.org for more information on the amazing benefits Del One Federal Credit Union has to offer. Become a member today. Conditions and restrictions apply. Equal opportunity lender. Deposits are federally insured by NCUA. Trailers, trailers, trailers. Jim Weller here, and if you need a trailer, give me a call. Open and close, new, used, rusty, dusty, whatever. If you need a used trailer, give me a call. Got a used trailer you want to sell? Give me a call. Want to talk turkey? 
give me a call. We look forward to hearing from you. Hey folks, Colin Walls here for Wall Service Center. Have you turned your car's AC on only to find out it's blowing hot air? Are you tired of the quick fix that only lasts a couple of days? If so, come see me at Wall Service Center. Wall Service Center has been automotive air conditioning specialists for over 50 years. Stop in. We're located on Northeast Front Street in downtown Milford. Or give us a call. 422-8110. Hey everybody, Jim Weller here from Wellers in Bridgeville. And today, let's talk about carports. Different roof styles, colors, shapes, sizes, lengths, widths, and so on. If you need a carport, call Wellers today. They include free delivery and setup right to your yard. Give me a call today. Catch it live, live streaming of your events in high definition video to anywhere in the world. Call Jim at 337 7300. 337 7300. 337 7300. No event too small. <laughs> Coach Del Percy, uh, what did you think uh, was the key to victory uh, tonight? I thought the way our defense played. I mean, we defense kept us in the game offensively in the first half. We did not. Uh, we didn't convert on some of the big plays. And I think that's a credit to Cesar Rodney. I mean, Cesar Rodney did a great job in the first half uh, stopping us offensively. But our defense kept us in. And we were able to keep that momentum going. We go in at halftime with a lead and then convert on some big plays in the second half. It seemed uh, Cesar Rodney, since they uh, jumped out to the uh, six nothing lead, even with the penalties, it seemed like your team just worked through uh, through those. Yeah, I mean, we talked to our guys about adversity and, and, and bouncing back. And hey, you know, nobody wants to let up six points quick, but uh, it, you know, you can't just put your head down and you know put your tail between your legs. Realize, uh, you know, this is the game. This is you know, it's, this is life. I mean, you need to deal. With bad things are going to happen. You need to deal with it. Bounce back. And I couldn't have been happy with the way our guys, our guys, our guys responded. What was your message uh, to the players uh, after this big win against CR? Uh, we talked about the fact that uh, you know this this is a program. Uh, you know we've had uh, we've had some great teams, um, and I've alluded to the fact that you know this team is not 2012 because it's a different group of guys. But that doesn't mean this program cannot cannot stay at a high level. Uh, and that was one of the things that uh, you know I think some people would. I doubted this, you know, early on today when Middletown's not the same team they were last year. They were so good last year. And talk about the fact that, hey, you know, we're going to write our own chapter and let's make it special. Talk about the performance of uh, Darius Wade. There's a reason why he's going to be going to uh, play on Saturdays, I believe, next year. I mean, he is, I mean, running, throwing the ball. I mean, he, he's, he's a player. I mean, he's a four-year starter. I think this is his... Uh, 38th game he's played in high school football. Um, it, you know, the young man can do it all, but he's such a bright young man. He does a great job reading defenses, does a great job with, uh, you know, with Audubon line of scrimmage, and he, he goes on phase, and he really is a high character uh, young man. I'm, I'm glad number four is on our side. Coach Adel Percy, is there anything you'd like to add? Not at all. Just, I, you know, Cesar Rodney's one heck of a team, and I wish him the best of luck for the rest of the year. Thanks, uh, Coach, uh, for taking the time. Thank you, sir. <laughs> And we're back live in Camden. The final score tonight, Middletown 41, CR6. And now it's time for the Delaware Electric player of the game. And, John, I think it has to be Darius Wade, quarterback, Middletown. I think so, too. I mean, there was some really outstanding performances. But when you talk about somebody who contributed almost on every single offensive play, there is Mr. Wade. Now, John, next week's game, Sussex Tech taking on the Milford Bucks, week number three. Before we wrap this up, one last time, tell us about our newest sponsor, First State Chevy. We are proud to have our new sponsor, First State Chevrolet on Route 113 in Georgetown. Your one-stop shop for all of your automotive needs. With new Chevrolet sales, 
service, and a collision center in one convenient location. Come see their professional, courteous staff and see why they put you, the customer, first. Reach them at 302-856-2521 or on the web at firststatechevy.com. First State Chevy in Georgetown. I'd like to thank my broadcast partner, John Martin. I'm Anthony Joseph. The final tonight, Middletown 41, CR6. You've been listening to Friday Night Football under the lights on catchitlive.com and Hot Country 1077. Until next week, so long, everybody.